What's up, motherfuckers? Rip, ride, or die podcast episode four. My guest, legendary skateboard photographer Mike Ballard, and the one and only Slappy, one of my first clothing sponsors ever. These guys got so much fucking history with skateboarding. Fuck, known them for decades. It's gonna be a great episode. Check it out. What's up, motherfuckers? Rip, Ride, or Die podcast, episode four. This one's special to me. I'm fucking uh, 51 years old. I'm pretty fucking old. I've been around a minute. And these two motherfuckers right here, yep, I said motherfuckers. That's a good thing. When I say motherfuckers, that means they're my homies. Slappy and Mike Ballard. This is a fucking radical photographer that shot photos me when I was super young. Slappy was one of my... uh, Clothing sponsors, like back in the day, first clothing sponsors, league, fucking uh, run around San Jose. So there's a lot of history with these two dudes right here from when I was a little shit to, to fucking these guys were involved in skating, like when I was just jumping into the scene. So like the the, the stories and the, the photos that he's taken and all the fucking cool shit you made for everybody running around with all the fucking rad skateboarders that I looked up to. So this is going to be a fucking great episode, Slappy and fucking Mike Ballard. Dude, this is going to be amazing. I'm fucking stoked to hear. They fucking drove from Long Beach. He doesn't have a car. He, he sold it for I don't know money. what. Money. <laughs> money. For money. I, I just made that up. But Mike was nice enough to fucking hop in the car and you guys drive out. I appreciate it, man. So fucking th- this is uh, this is awesome, <laughs> and you guys known each other for uh, there, there's some history right here, years. right? We've been around a minute, 30, 35, 35 years, thirty five years, thirty five years, eighty seven. Yeah, we've met at probably Yearman's or the Fountain or somewhere at Gilbert's or somewhere down there. The, and when you say the Fountain, that is San well, Bernardino, San Bernardino, San Bernardino. Central, Central City Mall. You see a lot of photos now where they've taken the guardrail and they've cut down a section of it. Yeah. And for whatever reason, they're letting people skate it. But it's like a brick volcano. We call it the fountain because it was a fountain. It, it, yeah. It had water in it. It had water in it, and it was a fountain. There was water going in it. So if you lost was, your board or whatever, it, it was, was going in that slippery. And, and the photo that I remember, the only main photo, I, I, I'm going to say it, but do you, got, do you what's the one that, like, I, I know the one that I, that I first seen. The skateboarder? For me, it's Neil Blender. That's too. what I was going to say. That's you know, what I was looking for. Neil Blender, that photo, front side Ollie. Yeah. Front side Ollie, and he's on the opposite side. Like, that was the side that had a that had a longer push-up to it. Yeah. Luckily, back then, we were riding 60-millimeter bullets. Or, Bi- yeah, or but bullet 66s you know, or slime bucket, cum buckets. Probably, the 66s came out probably a year after yeah. I was skating that spot. Yeah. But, but at the time, I mean, it was like you're on Vision Blur, 60s, or... OJ's uh, or the OJ's, OJ's or yeah. bullet, but yeah. 60 millimeter, 95 durometer was kind of the the, the deal. It was perfect for those bricks. For street skating, because the bricks were were thick, and and that was a fun spot. We I don't know if we met there. I mean, it was a legit fountain, not just with water, and it. it had water shooting from around like, the outside of oh, it, yeah. shooting in. That's, so it would spray that lip, that concrete lip at the top. Yeah, and it was sketchy. <laughs> Yeah, it, it, it was. Up. That thing's kind of hard. We People probably rip met it. There. We, pro- we seriously probably met there. What year do you guys think that was? 87. 87. Yeah. 87. That's a fucking radical. There was kids that I would go skate with that I met at Ron Yearman. And that could have been too. We, if I didn't see you at the fountain, then I met you at Yearman the Germans. And Ronnie Yearman had a... Uh, that was a vert ramp at that time. He had a vert ramp that was, I want to say, you know, small. probably eight and a half feet tall. Yeah. yeah. You know, a foot, a solid foot of vert with a foot extension. Yeah, and and Ronnie knew a lot of people. I mean, Pipeline uh, was still open. Pipeline, yeah. Pipeline at Del Mar was open, but all the other skate parks were all closed. Right. So it had been from like the early '80s, mid '80s. Everyone had started to build brands, and so I want to say the first time I heard of Yearman, Ron Yearman. He's got a son, Ronnie Yearman. He's got another boy, uh, Nathan Yearman, uh, ripping skateboarders, ripping humans. Um, his wife, Denise, um, always, you know, accommodating to us, just his girlfriend then, but we'd go and stay yeah. in his house and, and you know, hellions, and just let us stay, drink, barbecue, skate, flop, whatever. Shower, that's good old the dude. Coffee. I miss that. But Yerman, that's where I met Losi over there. He already knew him because Colton, he, he lived down the street. He, his house was somehow between where I was staying. You know, I'd gotten out of the... 
83 to 86, I was in the Marine Corps active duty, and I held 10, and then I was in 29 Palms. So yeah. I was in a combat unit. All I did was train. I met these kids that had a skateboard ramp in town, Randy Jansen and his little brother, Pete. Go Wing Trucks. He was a team manager forever, right? Yeah, for Go Wing yep. Trucks. And Randy. they had a ramp called the Death Trap. And, and I never I like that name. really... I, I couldn't skateboard to save my life, but I loved it. Yeah, no, yeah. That was the ramp in 29 Palms? Yep, it was yeah. called the Death Trap. And so I knew of Yerman from those guys who talk, oh, Ron Yerman has a ramp. And then I ended up in San Jose for a minute. But then my wife at the time got pregnant, and we were driving to move to, to Rialto to live with her mom. Yeah. And then, you know, 70 miles out of San Jose, she's in the car. My little, I think I had a Yugo, a little Yugo. It was thirty nine ninety nine. dollars They were free, cheap, man. Came with a free mountain bike. and <laughs> Yeah, dude, this you case know, of breaks down and so you just jump on the mountain about bike. Or whatever, <laughs> yeah. Insurance. Yeah. But she, pull, she pulls up next to me. I'm in the U-Haul, and she pulls up next to me, and her, she's crying. Her eyes, eyeliner coming down her face, and she's pointing in her stomach. And um, we pull over at this little truck stop. The first one before you get to the 5 and the, and the 152 right there, just outside of Los Banos. Pull over, get out of the car, look at her, pick her up, take her into the bathroom. Baby comes out. Game over. It's a brand new deal. Yeah. And uh, so then we went into Los Banos Hospital. Next day, we drove to Rialto, and then like five days later, I'm, I'm meeting him, I'm meeting Ron Yearman, and learning about all these spots and skating in the Inland Empire. And so Central City Mall. You were like the new kid in town. Mike, were you taking photos back then too? Yeah, I went I went to Eisenhower High School. So Eisenhower. I went to school. And where? And where? Rialto. Rialto. So I went to school at the Losis with Alan and Gil. You went to school? With yeah, Gil was in my class. And then no. Alan. Al What's that? You know the Losis. Yeah. You went to yeah. school? Yeah. High school. High school. Al, and he has a brother, you said? Is that what you said? Yeah, he has yeah. a big brother, Gil, who was- Did uh, he skateboard? Yeah, he skated. He was actually, he ripped, man. Yeah. He was good. And then, and then, so this, this was within the height of like Veriflex. So yeah. we're talking, now we're going back even farther, like 1980. Yeah, probably. So that's Early. fucking so, radical. Yeah, so I skated Colton, and um, I went to Eisenhower, so there was pros. There was a, quite a few pros <laughs> that, that went through Eisenhower and lived in Rialto. Right, yeah. So I remember- off of Pepper? It was. Yeah, it, was. it was above, uh, it was above uh, baseline. It was a baseline pepper. Okay. Yeah. Al Losey, dude, you went to fucking high school with Al. Lo That's fucking radical. Yeah, so I got, you know, I knew all the dudes, all the Colton locals, yeah. all the Colton locals. So you yeah. had all kinds of people coming through there, yeah. Lance Mountain. Yeah, like Lance, all that. dude, radical. And then we didn't live far from Upland. So I had a, I think I got, I think I got my Upland card in like, literally like probably seven. That's so sick. I, I never had it, dude. No, yeah, dude, that's <laughs> rad. I got my uh, the turf from Milwaukee yeah. somewhere, I think. So then, yeah, as things were starting to close, Colton closed and all that, that's when, like, basically street, skirt, street skating was starting. And so, yeah, we'd just be hitting, like, the fountain and all that. We used to skate that little bank that was right by there. I don't say it was a possible bank or something, but it was. And, um, yeah, I remember possible. meeting in there. It's there. crazy that fountain's still there. Like, I... I just remember that that Neil Blender frontside ollie, and then when I moved to Redlands, which is close to San Bernardino, yeah. someone mentioned the fountain. I'm like, dude, I got to go there just to fucking rad. go it's there. It's like it's probably it brought a lot of people together back then. It literally got me my start. I was already shooting photos since junior high, skate photos. Right. Okay. So, but uh, that's I got started getting published from there from the fountain. We were there one day, and Dwayne Peters rolls through there at the fountain at, at the fountain no with Christian Klein. Christian and I Klein. think Curtis Stevenson, who Stevenson, who owned Power Edge, or who started his dad's. Yeah, I, I still got yeah. some Power Edge magazines, man. So those guys rolled through there one day, and I was. They were. Uh, They're like, you know, what's? They, they, they just for some reason rolled there, probably seeing Blender. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Or whatever, and then all at the same time, and um, and uh, that's how I hooked up. God, that's how I got hooked up. Yeah, photo stuff is. I was like, oh, oh wow, shit, I met somebody from a magazine. Yeah, right. Yeah, and then um. I had kind of seen a lot of what was going on before that, just with like, I remember I'd, I'd talk to Losey, he'd be like, what are you doing? Where are you going? What are you doing this weekend or whatever? Yeah. It's like, oh, we're going to St. Louis, VP Fair. Yeah. Or we're going to Michigan, you know what I mean? For that first contest of Danny Wade won. Okay, yep, yep. And uh, I, at the time I had, I was, I had a good job. I was making good money. I'd be like, I'll go to Ontario. Just buy, you could just walk in and buy a plane ticket. That, that's so be cool. Be like, okay, yeah. I'm there. I'm St. Louis. You know, there's a vert ramp. I'd see all those dudes up there, MoFo and. Bryce and like Grant and those guys. Yeah, like, oh, shit, I could probably do that. Yeah, yeah, dude, hell yeah. So, 
I, at that time, I knew I was just, I sucked skating. You know what I mean? Yeah. I could skate pools. I grew up skating pools and all that stuff like that. But like, yeah. Car no way. You know what I mean? I mean? You're like going to school with dudes that are pro. Like, yeah. yeah, on a whole nother do that. fucking <laughs> level, huh? Yeah, low C- yeah, yeah, it's crazy. Back then too, because the cement was big, and there's all these parks, a lot of different parks, and there's big cement. And uh, wow, yeah. You see photos of stuff, and you don't realize. You know, it doesn't give it justice. Some of the, the shit that those dudes were doing. But so, yeah, I, let me finish this real quick. I so I yeah. I, I kind of got those guys said send photos. Send me photos. If you got photos of all the dudes out here, send photos in. Yeah. And that got me thinking, like, oh, I could send people photos. Fuck yes. So I sent them a batch, and I sent Thrasher a batch, and then I got, like, the back something else page. And something else, dude. I always look forward to that fucking page. It was like my nephew picking his nose, like, standing on a skateboard. And, like, they ran a full page. I yeah. Like, Sick. That's fucking <laughs> cool. Exactly. Yeah, they do. They still do some. I, I, I don't something know. Else. Something else. It's, it's always something crazy. People yeah, can just send stuff in. Yeah, and they'll and then, fucking um, publish it. Yeah, and they'll publish it. You know, people either eating it or doing weird stuff. And that was what like, was your first photo in what magazine? Power Edge. The first thing was in Thrasher. That, that Thrasher. was the first thing, full oh. page. And then within like a month or two after that, I was like continually in Power Edge. What uh, what photo was it in Thrasher? It was my nephew. Oh, that was that one. It was that board, one. Just picking his nose. Okay. Full page. I think it was uh, probably 86. And then. Set the tone. Yeah. yeah. And then. Yeah. And then. That gave me the thing. Like, I can do this. Yeah. yeah. Fucking, you got something. A pack, like, dude. I, yeah. You're, you know all the dudes. Yeah. And then just by being able to go to the contest with, like, Losi or I knew Algera. I knew I yeah. a bunch of dudes from that area. Salba. Yeah. Like, all them. Just, there, we had a we had a pretty cool cool of people out there. Yeah. Like, good crew. Yeah. I mean, even, you know, Upland is pretty far west, but like Redlands, uh, Highland, Rialto, San Bernardino, um, Riverside, that whole area, there was a lot of people out there. And there was a lot of different spots that once you were out there and you're in the mix, you're like, hey, where are you going? And there was different places. Like there was still part of a defunct, I don't know if it was San Bernardino or Highland, but there was like a snake run left. Skater crater. Skater crater. Skater crater. First yeah, I, I remember really? that. It was just north of like baseline or I can't remember the other street there, Foothill. But I just remember going there and I remember I saw Jason Catalano there, Sony Catalano. Yeah. Um, oh yeah, yeah, it yeah. Was, it was uh and he could rip. Rest in peace, Sonia, right? Like, yeah. Uh, yeah. Oh yeah, rest, rest in, in peace. Absolutely, absolutely. Castle she, contest. She um so her boy was there, and I think you know, he was like into whatever, whether it was New Wave or whatever, but he just, you know. He played in bands. He he was just um, kind of like a. <laughs> he what? He played in bands. Oh, okay. He was okay. Like really low key. He was just really low key. And a lot of the skaters that are like the, the you know, the heavy hitters or whatever, all that Sonia's son, like she runs Castle or whatever. And I think a lot of people were kind of not cool to him. And he was really shy. He yeah. skateboard. And I remember right. skating with, I remember seeing him at that place and, um, you know, he was like one of those guys that had the early Bishkalati, like the Tony Hawk. With the shaved and then the, the little yeah, flapper, yeah. huh? The little he, flapper. He had the Bishkalati going, and he just was like. I remember know, those. I, I never like did it, but. Moving his hair. You know, if I had hair, I'd yeah. probably bald on top like Uncle Bester. But um, <laughs> yeah, he, I just remember he'd be like that, but he was really quiet, but he could skate. I remember one time I said, hey, Jason, we're going to go to the fountain. Met him there, and I'd skated there a lot. I'm thinking, yeah, I got the backside this and the front side this. Yeah. And he just came up and owned it. Yeah, owned yeah. It. And all the other I, kids were looking were like, the dude rips. Ripping. Yeah. And about that time, where the fountain was right there was the entrance to the Central City Mall. There was a walkway that went up two stories up and went across. I don't remember what the street is. East Street, maybe. Goes East Street. Goes across, down. Yeah. And yeah. the other side, where there was this business park, but there was these levels of bricks. Yeah. There was all kind. There was this amazing wall ride. There was handrails, yeah, stairs. Was. You know of it, Mark? Do you know what he's talking about? Because he's from down here. The yeah. Courthouse. The courthouse. Yeah. yeah. All right. There you go. Yeah. So there was all okay. this stuff okay. over there, and we were skating, and somebody walked by and said something, and just like the skater heads, who at the time, '87, yeah, we're out, we're kooks. We're now everyone. You, we're you got, you know, fucking uh, outcast. Yeah, yeah. Losers. Hey, we used to be running around there during this time period. Yeah. There used to be a baby Eric Costin that was like cruising around behind everybody. Like, oh, no, Eric Costin. It was actually Eric? Yeah, or, it, was, it, was, it was Eric. Eric a baby, okay. He's from Highland, California, but, but, so. This whole... Yeah, I heard he was from out. Yeah. He well, lived in San Bernardino for, for a couple that's of years. That's what I heard. I just remember he was a little skinny little kid, super quiet. You, you know, I mean, you're not looking at him at the time because it yeah. wasn't like these days you have 10-year-olds, you're like, 
got kids going. So yeah, you don't see that back then. Like we were skating the fountain, and all of a sudden, I just heard this. Whoosh, and this thing, <laughs> this is a rebar. It's like a brake <laughs> bar, and this thing went flying by my head. Three eighths brake bar. Went flying look, by my head. Yeah. Feel that. If that would have hit me in the head, I would have more brain damage than I have now. Wait, this is actually from That's the, the one. Yeah. That's the from one. From how long ago? This guy, man. This guy. I got problems. 87, 87 no, years. This is from 87? That's fucking, that's fucking yeah. radical. Yeah, but I kept that in my car forever, and I was always it's a like. Fucking great weapon. I was too. like, yeah, I mean, come on, look at in that. The Yuga? Was handle. that in the Yuga? This was in the, in the Yuga. This huh. was in the Chevelle. This was in the Nissan Hardbody. This was in the Dodge Ram 1500. This was in. Yeah. Used to pull up in a red Yugo. A Yugo, I know. Those things were cheap. Hey, it was cheap. And I can't even tell you. One time, the first time I bought fabric from Levi's, like, I I went. Um, you well, hauled, tell, you tell hauled it in the Yugo? I took the front seat out of the Yugo. I put 800 yards of brushed cotton tool in the Yugo. I don't know how many rolls it was, but it was fabric. totally impossible. Yeah, yeah. It was totally impossible. The people were just looking at me like, you're not going to be able to do that. And I'm like still like fresh out of the rink I'm like, watch this. I put all the rolls in the car and, and like, I can't remember if I put one on top or I had to come back, but literally it was completely like guaranteed death and rode from San Francisco to San Jose. Right. And then put it in like Corey O'Brien's living room. You know? Corey O'Brien, yeah. <laughs> this must have been a little later though because- In the Yugo. No, 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 this was in that- the Is U this after you were making those cute little satchels with the no, Safeway, this in, the this Safeway was in nice straps? Did was you get seat belt out of the shopping cart? Oh, oh yeah, yeah. Steal yeah. those and make these booty bags. <laughs> I'm just so little booty, what'd you call them? Oh, booty bags. Booty bags. <laughs> the Yugo wasn't all bad. I all fabricated. There's a lot of other things that happened in it. But um, I took, I had an M16 cleaning kit. Vision was making those little- Booty bags. Booty bags. But little booty it had fanny bags. Fanny pack. Fanny pack. Fanny fanny pack. pack. I remember fanny this. Pack this is, I remember this Santa Cruz this made those. That is a name of the booty bags. Fanny yeah. Who wears those? Yeah. Bracelets were big. That was your intro into the, the, the well, apparel that was game, it. right? That was part so of for you guys that don't know, Slappy's... Uh, 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 made, made clothes for a lot of skateboard, more like uh, everything. I, oh, do, I do you call yourself a clothes designer? The, de What's the, de it the denim I mean, donkey. I, I, the denim donkey? I, I donkey. Call, donkey. I, I call myself the denim donkey, but the I started denim. as a designer and then I became like private label manufacturer, but I've gone from one end to the other, but like, Oh yeah, you want to make that? Okay, and and I started to make stuff. You know, you you made me cool he's stuff had, when he's I had wrote the for toe in denim right now too. You made me some cow printed pants. I remember I had like Never a pair does. of cow printed pair of fucking but bleep I, pants. I was giving stuff. I gave Ill. stuff to you. Ill, yeah, yeah. I, I was just having fun because I worked for a computer oh, yeah. company, and but I I gave. I remember I gave Kendall a pair. I gave Grasso a pair, and I gave ben Simon. Schroeder. Simon. Simon. Not yet. He, oh. Simon came later, but Man. I gave Ben Schroeder a pair. And so those guys were wearing these pants, and they were just a Limpy's copy, but I improved it a little bit. Like, I, I put a chain wallet loop. Yeah, because they were all chain wallet guys. Of course. I, I even wore one because chain, of those dudes. I did. I didn't have no money or nothing. There's no reason for me to have a wallet, but because J.J. Rogers and Ross Goodman had uh, chain wallets, they, I had to have one. There was nothing course. in my wallet. I had no, I was fucking <laughs> eight, 17 years old, dude. There was like nothing. 40s, like 40s, two big ones. Yeah, I, yeah, the, the, I, that I was going was on. Both did you, hey, did you, did you, did you like present the baggy jeans to the industry? Or? No, no. Or was it you, the small, I mean, the big pants, small wheels, wasn't the your big pants, invention? That was happened. such a horrible time. Huh? Think, How did that happen? Was That's so short, crazy. Luckily, it was a very short-lived oh. time. It was a very short-lived time. Fucking thank God. You know, because sometimes I think, oh, man, I made this, but it was literally like one year. And the big jeans was blind. I made the first. Oh, okay. I'm convinced that I'm, I was in, so I got hired by Santa Cruz. I'm living in Indonesia, overseeing the production. I take a pair of Levi's 501, and then I take a pair of like Stussy beach pants, but I made Stussy. them like huge. I made them big. Yeah. I'm like, I'm like, cause skating, I mean, you want to do a Benihana or a, a big, you know, jump on your skateboard or whatever. You got to have a baggy. They weren't clown size yet, but I made those in Santa Cruz. Like, you know, Berto and Keenan were like, time out. We're not making that. Yeah. And, um, and so Blind made them, and Blind blew up with the Blind gene, and then like a year later, you know, tonight we were walking the trade show, and he looked at me, he's like, you should have done those jeans, son. I go, hey, 
you know, whatever. You, you got to do what you got to do. <laughs> Santa Cruz was always behind everything anyways. They were like that. Yeah. They're, you're talking about a corporation that when has you, to all be right, safe. You say safe. Skateboarding and safe does not go together no. at all. Did no. they have those little skateboarding? stickers on their boards? Like they were the first one to have that little stick. That's on, on the top deck. That always says know, safety. Little, warning, be like, safe. Be like, safe or be something. Be safe. You might, you know. Well, just fuck no. I'm going to skateboard and I'm going to fucking feel some pain and eat shit. Hey, no, I'm not going to be safe. God hey, damn it. You know, you got to understand, you got Rich Novak at the very top calling the shots behind the scenes. And he's like thinking about probably properties, holdings, liabilities. Like I'm not getting sued. And, and Bob's like comes from, he's a pro skateboarder that ends up going to school. And then he works. He's the guy left a very good job at, I want to say he worked for Lay's Potato Chips. He left a promising career for an unknown entity in the skateboard business at that time, which was no guarantees. And so I, I assume, I'm not defending them. I'm just explaining what yeah, I think don't, happened. Don't. Yeah. I'm just like, those guys <laughs> yeah, were exactly, yeah. going to protect themselves so, so, from any liability. Yeah. And making baggy skateboard jeans was too risky. Where yeah. are we on the timeline here? Are we, are we to 90 yet? Are we to 1990 yet? We've got six hours ago. No, we're still in 88. We've been jumping <laughs> back and forth. We got no, there were San Jose days, because that's where I first met, met that you. That was after. I, I, after. I was only But down. like, when you said Ben Schroeder and those guys, like the, the the candy warehouse and then H Street. That was eighty eight. I mean, what year was that when we were all skating there? Because my brain's cooked. I always I, I'm bad at years. Yeah, like Kennedy's and then the second one Kennedy's on H Street. Was and then the Santa Cruz warehouse too. Remember there was that, a that's Santa a Kennedy's Cruz. warehouse. No, 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 no the one in Santa Santa Cruz. But that was oh the cannery, cannery. the cannery. cannery. Yeah, was that was later. later. The but. cannery was after they moved from forty four hundred one to Bronson okay. to the to the other side. Um, so yeah, but, I know one thing. He introduced me to San Jose. Who, uh, he did. Really? Well, he did. Right. He went up to that's where we met, around, right? Around, around 88, Mike, 89. Mike so. helped me, like, so we had the miscarriage, and I lived down there for a year and a half, which seemed forever. But in that year and a half, I was busy. So I'm like, I had just got out of the Marine Corps. Like, it's like being in prison for, for three years. Now you're out. I'm going to skate. I yeah. catch up. Even though I sucked, it didn't matter. I had the fever. And I knew all these rad people that skated. We all sucked back then compared to Andy. <laughs> no, I oh. sucked too, <laughs> dude, dude. You're a well, I mean, fireball. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> but, but, you know, down here, there was a handful of people. Yeah. But, you know, Losi was at the top yeah, of the he pyramid. He was off skating contest. You know, he was street, at the top so. of the pyramid. So you go to like, you know, when you're younger, you go to like a, a small ramp and you see, you're like, that's Al Losi. And I remember I learned to do like a grind off the extension and then, no, like ollie off the extension and landed a grind, which was almost a hang up, and then come in. Yeah, yeah. And then, you know, one out of five I could make and eat shit the other four times. Yeah. And I was doing it though, and I showed Alan, and Alan shows up, boom, drops in, Smith grind across the extension, ollie off to Smith grind on the lower, you know, like, yeah, he was Alan good. Was like that. And yeah, he's so ahead of his time, man. You know, well, dude, he's, he's just skating, he grew up like skating Colton and Del Mar, and but he also like these really natural. jacked bulls. You know? Yeah, so anything else that was like, yeah. like, like, like it was, was it made just, it easy. The original combi was gnarly. It, it was. I never crazy. been there, but it looked Over fucking gnarly. Yeah, it was lumpy. It, it was. It, it, it looked. Like, it looked like it. Sal had told me at one point what they did. Like you'd go there and you're like, oh, I'm just gonna knee bend like you're on a half pipe or something, and you'd be sliding down on your knees, and then you get through the bottom of the transition, your knee pads just. Whoosh, Rip like this rip yeah. off. Yeah, and, that concrete was rough, huh? They Salva said that they had put some kind of chemical cleaner on it to like clean polish it or, it or make some it less slippery. Yeah, but it ate through the top layer, which made it rougher. Yeah, yeah if you were knee sliding, you had to like you, you had. I think that's why those guys were wearing like. And they were blasting the airs and the knee bell from fucking so much vert. Like, it ain't like a ramp where you could catch the train. You know, it was like so much vert. Like, no. they would, like, like yeah. fuck to the flat bottom yeah, and knee slide. I really watched it. There was a 15-foot bowl lit up there, too. That was another thing. I remember the that. Uh, that that so went was, into the, the full pipe? Bottom, bottom, that, bottom of the snake There was okay. a smaller run. All right. Was Gnarly. Was like a, I mean, I'm sorry, like a slung. Yeah. Canal and then it hooked around right, to the right and it was massive. It like yeah, grab, dude. That's cool. very few people could skate it. Yeah. Well, there's pictures of Mickey Alba, dude. I Mickey you gotta mention Steve Mickey when you're up on oh. Mickey he Miller, was, Chris yeah, Robinson, fuck. Chris Robinson, Chris Miller, Eric Juden, Eric Nash. Yeah. Yep, those you dudes. Know, uh, don't want don't want Dwayne. The first guys I saw pole. was photos of like Tay Hunt. Tay Hunt doing a backside air like four feet out in that 15 Con foot bowl. Oh, gnarly. And on like a little board, like. You know, yeah. like this is like '77 or something. Before. That's fucking heavy, yeah. too. For back then, when you skated the down, that was actually pretty skinny. <laughs> it, 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 it was sick. It, it, it was yeah, because it was. But it'll make it you a gnarly like skater. Pretty cake, yeah. 
but it was still like I always wish Six I got feet skateboard. Of or something. I don't know. I wish we had a you know an authority. It was just like, big, man. It was, it was big. massive. When you go to the top of that thing, just carving at the very top, and you're looking down, you're like, wow. Then to picture those guys doing airs out or doubles, like some guy yeah. doing a frontside grind, and then a guy above him in that, you're like, oh wow. Like there's another. There's there's a photo- I don't think I have any photos from the 15 foot bowl there. Really? I got pipe photos, commie photos, but I don't think I have anything. But definitely nothing out of those. There was these back little bowl things in the back. Nothing. The only photos I have are the combi or the pipe. What's the the the, the photo that stands out the most uh, that you took at Upland? Of who? Does it? Is there one certain one? I know you probably got uh, probably a, probably that, all the for Yerm, your the favorite. Yerman crew like pounding beers while it's getting that, bulldozed. That's my favorite. I don't know if it ever got published. That's my yeah. favorite yeah. photo. But skateboarding, like skating, someone doing a trip, like just fucking a, a rad photo. That you got so many, huh? They're, I, man, you know what? I, what yeah, but I, I think of other people's photos more than No, I, I know that. I know. I, I know. Like Miller, I was just you know, Miller, no, Like Grant Britton's say, photos of Miller. Yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah he took a lot of good photos. Ronnie Yearman, Tracy Little. Yeah, they're all like drinking. And Somebody's got like a blue thrasher hoodie with the Ron. red lettering on I think it. Ron, yeah. And they're like, it's got to be Ronnie. And they're right. outside, they're drinking. No, I'd have to. I don't know. I'd have to. Seriously, I'd have to go back and look through. Like, yeah, cool. I have you a got a lot. Of, yeah, I yeah. Have a set of books with everything I shot. There in like, was all your shit all organized and yeah, shit. Yeah, yeah I bet. Super man. At that think. time, getting out of the Marine Corps, going to San Jose, and meeting Brad Boardman. And I, 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 I was on Ryan, Santa Cruz with Brad. I went on Mike a contest Pusango. with him. Yeah, all the Mike Pusango, he dressed in all that. white. Remember that? Just in all white. Oh, yeah. be, he, uh, uh, he his favorite skater Chris was Chris Miller. Yeah. He had like all, Obviously. he did all Chris Miller's tricks. Hey, but he ripped. <laughs> no, he did. It's not, a, not a bad person to emulate, man. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. I go from hanging out with, with uh, the Jansen brothers at the Death Trap. I get out of the Marine Corps. I move back to San Jose. And so right away, I want to get into skateboarding. I happen to live down the street from Sessions. So Gavin O'Brien worked there. Aaron yeah. Arno worked there. Yeah, I remember Brad, Aaron. Aaron was sick. Brad yeah, Brad, or is sick. Yeah, Brad Boardman worked there. And so I got to meet right away, like all these gnarly dudes. And I, I was a kook. I couldn't skateboard, but I had guns and I was married and I just smoked. Yeah, like, guns. Who, I'm fucking like, smoking coal. <laughs> yeah. yeah. And I didn't, I didn't want to. There's and the booty, bags. the booty bags. And booty. Yeah. The, no, you didn't do, do that. So they wouldn't have accepted you. It was an M16 <laughs> cleaning kit. And I took the baby, love's baby soft seatbelt off of shopping cart. And I, you know, I sewed it to the M16 cleaning kit. And that was my. My fanny pack. Yeah. You know, they're like, what is that? I'm like, it's an M16 cleaning kit. Oh, you still got one of those. I know you do. Of course I do. I yeah. The original. Sa- San Jose. He has one do- of everything he's ever touched. Yeah. The, Including the, weapons and everything. Hey, do you guys remember uh, since San Jose, uh, the, the punk house? Of course. Fucking uh, Todd Prince. Ben- Top oh, they had the ramp. They had the ramp behind it. No, was no, there no? no. Was another, Just no, the, uh, the punk houses where Shannon lived. That was the, the, uh, uh, Todd oh, Prince, was JJ Rogers. Ross Goodman, Grosso lived there for yep. a while. Schroeder lived there for a while. Yep. And I think it was like dude, those. JJ, dude. I'm, but JJ, J- JJ I was fucking so love crazy. JJ, dude. Like, if it wasn't for all those dudes, they, they like made me the skater I am. That's like, when I ran into those JJ guys, my so, skateboard, like, me as just a fuck. I, they turn, I think of JJ, dude. I just had such crazy Oh, fun. dude, I love him to death. You never yeah. look at that guy. You would never look at JJ and go, that guy's gnarly skate, gnarly skater. And fucking JJ. people don't know. That motherfucker skated street, vert, yeah, mini ramps. Yeah. He he had the first photo in the magazine doing a feeble grind on a handrail. The, it was a blockhead yeah. ad. He, uh, he it was did, a feeble he, grind. I remember he, he got Grosso out street skating. I got photos of that. They're sick, man. Yeah. I have a Grosso and JJ, photo. There was this little half round curb thing in San Jose. I remember what you're talking. I know what you're talking about. I got Let's a photo of uh, Grosso backsmith in that thing with like a big, like a big middle finger shirt on. Yeah, yeah. It's super sick. Dude, that wasn't for those guys. I wouldn't be who I. I would be for them, dude. They they showed me what skating was all about. Not giving a fuck, they, skating they were, and getting crazy. They were charging. That turned me into like and a little fucking the, shithead. They had the warehouse there. Not a, I mean, that was Kennedy Warehouse because they lit that that punk and house the skate park. Was afterwards. dude, they would like if you stayed at that house. Like they would fucking short sheet you. They fucking Todd made like a zap gun out of a nine volt battery. Anything, they would just fuck with each other, man. Was gonna happen. Yeah, Schroeder, was it, wait, 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 was all those 80, dudes. That wasn't eighty three. No, it was later, like eighty nine ish. That was, was eighty nine ninety. No, remember the house? Yeah, I was just a yeah. young dude. I was oh, yeah. so young. Oh, oh yeah, you're thinking of. Uh, That's where Louie and them live, right? 
I can't think of them. I, it's all blurred to me. All those yeah. houses that were that everybody lived in. Yeah. Louis, yeah. Louis like seven, eight years later. Like Louis okay. wasn't on the scene until you know mid nineties or something. I, I remember what house you're thinking about. It's a house. Well, I think I a took house. a picture of you with the AR-15 in the backyard. No, no, that was me and Shannon. That was me and Shannon. Uh, they're all blurred to me now. Yeah, yeah. Okay. But yeah, dude, those San Jose days were crazy. That like Kennedy Warehouse. Sorry, that's yeah. where. That's where I first met Tobin Yellen. To, to, yeah. Like I just got sponsored by Santa Cruz, that's and they had that Kendall and Corey O'Brien uh, rented out that warehouse, built yeah. the vert ramp and that spine ramp. Yeah, and you had to pay a hundred bucks, but if you rode rode for Santa Cruz, you got to skate for free or whatever. Yeah, so that's where I ran into sick. Joe Lopes, fucking I've got sick photos at everybody. From that place of, everybody. Uh, Bod and Bod, Ross, and Ross, Ross, yeah. Ross is JJ and Todd Sean Prince Ross too. Those dudes were there. my just favorite Sean, humans. Yeah. Just being able to go there, made you realize that I have zero chance of ever being <laughs> pro skateboard kid. Not even remotely possible. Just being an amateur skateboarder, that's not remotely remotely possible either. Because when you would see yeah. like some of these guys, like John Fabricer, John Fabricer was sick. Wrote for like, Dogtown. You'd see Fedge, or you'd see Prasenko, or you'd see yeah. JJ Rogers, or you'd see Ross Goodman. And Schroeder guys, skated there too. Guys, a lot, dude. Guys yeah. were amateurs. Guys were amateurs. They weren't pro, and you're like, these guys are gnarlier than the, you know. Yeah, the, different, a different, different um, mentality. Different mentality. <laughs> so I go from Marine Corps, San Jose. I meet those guys. Then I come down. here. To the Inland Empire for a year and a half, and I meet Losi and Yearman, Mike, and all these other people, Eddie O'Gara, and all these other guys, and skate down there. A whole different other kind of breed of skating compared to up north. So he, he introduced me to that whole scene up there. Uh, and then I would come being super good friends with Simon Woodstock and shooting a super amount of photos of him. Yeah. Once I got big, a lot of Big Brother photos, right? Assignment. I think you walked me into NHS where I, I did stuff with them for a while, not for long. Yeah, thank then God. I met Tom no, Knox. Yeah, no, yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah <it's>, they're super <laughs> funny there. Super funny there. They like <laughs> super funny. They burnt me out super hard to a point right, where I like, stopped shooting for a while. Yeah, I believe it, dude. I fucking believe it. I have at home. I, like I said, I have books. I have these bu- sleeve binders at home. That have every photo and every magazine I ever shot. That's cool. Hey, San Jose. And in the beginning, Junk Engines, Mofo. Mofo. Yeah. yeah. Mofo, you know, shout Fox, out Mofo, dude. Yeah, Mike yeah, Stevens. big time. He, Mofo took my very first first photo I ever had in Thrasher magazine was with Mofo. And it was in a calendar, a, a Thrasher calendar. Where was the shot at? It, it, at my fucking high school, I got kicked out of. Yeah. I got kicked out of it, and the earth, 89 earthquake happened. And I was on the freeway with my friend. I look over. And there's fucking two kids in the shallow end. The pool's empty. The pool, I used to have, they, PE, you had to go swim in that pool. And it was a fucking, like, 13 feet deep with spit gutter or whatever. Yeah. And uh, I fucking got off the freeway. My buddy took me and started skating it. And uh, uh, and then fucking, I wrote for Santa Cruz. And they hit me up. And they're like, dude, Mofo's here. I was like, oh, dude, I was 17 years old or something. I was like, fuck, dude, I got to go take photos. I called my buddy Nathan Horton. I'm like. Dude, where do I take him? So He's all you, Harbor High was, Pool. When were you? When did you get on Santa Cruz? I went out with you. I remember they had me go out with you. Yeah, and we went. We skated Santa Cruz High School. Yep. I remember you. Did you take off the, at some, over some trash cans? You took, did you take that photo? Of the independent ad I had, the 180 ollie over the can. Uh, I can't say for sure, but I I thought that, shot that would of be then ollie and over that 180 and over that can. Yeah, yeah. It and, was uh, a, in strange notes. It was in strange notes. I think it was in strange notes. I don't yeah, think it was I, I do know any, that. It, it was in strange. It wasn't in. But it's like eighty. Or, they found me at Buena Vista, uh, Steve Keenan. Uh, uh, that's where we, everything. We shot a. We shot a Buena too. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. Max Smith, like yeah, a bunch yeah. Of stuff there. Yeah. So I that was a fun spot. But he introduced me to that whole. Pool. He got me into that whole crew. So yeah, I met. I basically Some rad met skateboarding. Him through him. Yeah, yeah. Kinda, it's fucking, you know? <laughs> that's how rad skateboarding is, man. Well, that's the thing. I met all these people, so I got lucky. I knew guys from the desert, from the high desert. Remember, I went with those guys. They had moved. Their dad worked for yeah. NAS Naval Investigative Services, I think, and he had moved to San Diego. So, so Randy Jansen and Pete, his brother, they moved to San Diego. Then Randy became the going team manager. And before I forget, there was a guy named Kurt Moore, Corporal Kurt Moore, rest in peace. Uh-huh. Amazing skateboarder, amazing human. Right. Who was in the Marine Corps that I met early. I was just like, I saw his shoes, vans, obviously skating transition. I was like, hey, you skate? He looked at my shoes, like, you skate? And he's like, there's a ramp yeah. in town, you know? So that, that's, that's fucking cool. I got to meet these guys. And we went to Del Mar. 
I was in the Marine Corps and there was a contest. They called me like, hey, go to Del Mar. There's a contest at Del Mar. And I went there. I remember I'm sitting in the stands drinking Schaefer beer with them and saw McGill do the McTwist like at the first, I want to say it was like August 1984, 85. I don't remember, whenever he did the first McTwist. At Del Mar? But I remember being there and seeing it in person and everybody just went, oh my God. You know. Fucking did a 540. That's crazy. Like, it's over. Like, skateboarding's over right now. He just did that. We don't know what to do. I heard that Jeff Phillips was the first to do it. The McTwist? Yeah. Well, at the, on the clown ramp. You know, McGill just broke this all down on the internet. Did he? What did he say? He said he did it at like some skate camp in, in Sweden. Sweden. Who was on and, the uh, I did hear that. I did hear that. But yeah, that just was a rumor I heard. I don't know. I heard he did it like way back to, on the club. So yeah. Hard, but I didn't mean to interrupt. Yeah, but th that's No, no, did you see him I, skate? You saw Philip skate? I, oh, man. in person, I've been to a skate park. He wasn't there. The, the indoor, yeah. the Dallas one that he had, the Phillips skate park. So, I still got the stickers and so shit. Gnarly. He was one of my, he won that contest on acid. The fucking, uh, the that. Anaheim, uh, what the fuck was it called? The Anaheim one. Uh, Holiday Havoc. Yeah. He was Holiday super, he was super. Todd Prince told me a story. He fucking knocked on the, uh, on the hotel door to Todd's, and fucking Todd answered yeah. the door and, he had fucking hits of acid. He's like, I'm gonna oh, take yeah. some acid and skate. And I was like, fuck story. no. And fucking <laughs> Jeff, Jeff took him and then went and fucking skated against Tony Hawk and won. Oh my God. And fucking on acid. So about, anyway, yeah. After I come down there and I meet Mike and we're skating all these different spots and I know Losi and my wife at the time who had the baby had a, had a miscarriage and then I was on a mission to drink and skateboard and had to play catch up. Even though I sucked at skating, I was on a mission and then I just, you know, I just wanted to skateboard and I had no plans of working for a skateboard company or a shop. I didn't even think about that. But then I, my wife ended up doing something behind my back with a friend of mine and I decided, okay, after I'd, you know, hurt him a little bit, it was, yeah. time, to, it was time to get out of town. With that, yeah, put that. Yeah. It was time to get out of town. <laughs> yeah. And I call, I call up Losi. <laughs> I called Losi. I sold all my furniture. Mike helped me with his truck. He put all of my stuff in storage. And then I call up Losi. I'm like, hey, I don't know what to do. This is what happened. He goes, hey, come stay with me. You can work at my parents' business. It was me and Alan at Losi uh, RC Cars. And um, we were putting like little gears, little remote control car gears. RC in Cars, those are little oh, remote Eric control Grisham, cars, right? Eric yeah. Grisham was the boss. Eric Grisham was the boss. They had a racetrack in the back. They had a dirt track. They had a car track. And then Losi knew this guy named Tony Dwyer. And this is kind of how I became good friends with Todd Prince. So Tony Dwyer was a guy who rode like a scooter with inflatable wheels. All right. What the fuck? Yeah. It had, you know, inflatable tires on it. And, and he had had a ramp. He had all these connections in Florida where he had set up to do demos across Florida. He had a PA system. He knew all of these shops. I don't remember any of that. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Losi hooked me up. And so... They needed someone to go and be like road crew help with, and I just said goodbye to my wife, said goodbye to my living arrangements, and so I go with, well, they're going to pay me, and there's beer and weed, okay, you know, <laughs> yeah. I'm sorry, I don't want to, you know, this is a long time ago, I'm reformed, but yeah, yeah. so I'm like, okay, and um, the stories on that trip, like, so we build the ramp in Long Beach, it's 12 feet wide or 16 feet wide. It's it's. Wait, so this thing looked like a Razor scooter or something? Yeah, something like that. I don't know what it was called, but we just his name was Tony Dwyer, and we just wow, called him Scoot good. Boy. Scoot Boy. So Scoot. we load right. this trailer in Long Beach, and we drive. He had a truck like a like a Chevy, you know, like a, like a C10, yeah. you know, a long bed with a shell. We had a Texas style trailer, like a four wheel trailer. We put the ramp on the back, and this is a burnt ramp with like, with a flat bottom with like. I can't remember. It, was, it had to have more than it probably was twelve feet. Of flat yeah, bottom. that's what. Yeah, like yeah. twelve feet of flat bottom, eight and a half feet tall, just just like a, six inches of her, just enough you can do airs and stuff, right? Pop some air, yeah. And we and had little tiny four foot, you know, platforms, and so we put this in the trailer and we drive. We're gonna stop in Texas. We're gonna drive straight to Texas to Tony Dwyer's sister's house, and from there we're going to Florida to Tallahassee to do the first demo, and then oh. we drove around Florida for a month. But we're like, we're going through Texas and we're going down this incline. And luckily I had a lot of, I've driven high explosives in the Marine Corps. Yeah. Five ton trucks, pulling trail with high explosives, chain smoking cigarettes, not even concerned about death or any of that. And yeah. um, all of a sudden I'm in the trailer, Losi's sleeping next to me. It's, it's three in the morning. We're going somewhere in the middle of Texas. And the weight of the trailer 
was starting to push, push the, car, the car. Yeah. And we couldn't, and the brakes, I could smell the brakes getting bad. And all <laughs> it's of a sudden, sketchy. I'm trying not to, to, and all of a sudden we start to jackknife and the trailer starts to go like this and we're going back and forth. And I just remember Losi going like this, but he's, he's stoned and sleeping. And all of a sudden, whack, his head hits the window and he wakes up and he looks over at me. He just said he looks at me and he said I had the death grip on the steering wheel. I was just holding it, you know, with a cigarette in my mouth. And yeah. he said he looked out the window and he saw the trailer. And he's like, wow. passing you, <laughs> passing you, yeah. not That's, passing you. It was like, know, like, we like, like this, like, you know, we're yeah. like this at the time. So <laughs> it's about to get real bad. Yeah. And somehow, I mean, I'm praying. I'm, I'm a believer. I love the Lord. And, and although I've had a checkered past and, you know, yeah, that's all right. had some checkered yeah, vans. Yeah, um, yeah, yeah, yeah. I was like, Lord, <laughs> this is the time. <laughs> Please, and I'm not making promises, or I won't do this, or you know the prayers yeah, I'm yeah, talking about. Yeah, but yeah, I was like, please, yeah. and somehow, no idea. Somehow yeah. got it under control. Somehow got under control, wow. and then we eased those. I don't know if the guys in the back, but woke up. I can't remember who was. It was Craig Grosso, a BMX rider, and then Tony was in the back. Yeah. So we get to Houston. We're alive. Then we get to Tallahassee. Wait, did you guys pull it? Or Wait, get. A, no, we pulled it. Nothing it's happened. Tell, where's Nothing Tallahassee happened. at again? Where? But Florida, get, Northern no, Florida. You get to text that you, you you meet Todd Print. You got to talk, you got to meet Todd. Todd yet. Oh, you I have. met Todd okay, San Jose. But Todd. So we get to this. We get to the thing, and we get to Tallahassee. We put the ramp together. We're just there, just in time. The demo is the next day, and we're gonna get paid, right? You got to show up and set up. Yeah, yeah. We put the we flip the ramp over. We nail the top ply of masonite to it. Then we flip it over, and I go to just step on the ramp to, to just, I don't know what I was doing. I step on the flat bottom and the nail goes through my foot. <laughs> and I just- Rusty nail? And I, no, nah, because they're fresh. We just put Oh, okay, in. okay, okay. But, you know, we're putting the masonite, we're not putting the masonite to the two by fours. We're just, it's nighttime. There's no lights. We're in the parking lot in yeah, Florida. Yeah, just trying to get this shit done, it's huh? It's like so 90 skater. degrees yeah, yeah. and 89% humidity. There was a lot of that back then. You'd show up at like a contest and- Janky. Tim Payne would be like, oh, you know, get over here. Yeah, yeah. Everybody would have to chip in to build a yeah, river. Right? We didn't Make have it happen. Pain. We had someone else. And it was, <laughs> yeah. I had pain. I step on this nail, and then I jump off the nail, like, ah! And I land on my other foot. Nail goes through both feet. Nails through the feet. What? And I remember I just crab walked all the way across the parking lot to the, it's crab 10 o'clock at night. I just run over there, and I get, I take my shoes off, and like, <laughs> nails like through the feet, both feet. And those guys just look at me like, oh my God. Uh, yeah. We finished putting the ramp up. I put duct tape on my feet. We go, we're like, we're gonna go to FSU. FSU, Florida State University. We're gonna go street skate. That's and not what it meant for us. But it meant something else. Fuck yeah, shit up. Yeah, fuck shit up, huh? So okay. we yeah, yeah. go there. Yeah, yeah. Fuck shit up, Coors. And yeah. I think we're, now, somewhere along the line, we pick up uh, uh, Jim Murphy. Dogtown, Murphy. you know, Scabrada. Yeah. East Coast. Uh, Alba. Alba, yeah, yeah. Right? Alba. Yeah. Oh, yeah. I he said Alba guy. No, I said I Sorry. I meant yeah. Alba. Scabrada. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. We, we're with him, and we go to FSU, and we're skating around. There's some rad stuff there, and I'm in so much pain. I'm like, I got to skate. I got to skate. Right. I'm skating, and I fall, and I put my hand on this curb, and right as I put my hand down on the step, and on the step, I'm trying A to nail? lay up these steps. <laughs> What'd you say? A nail? I know. Dude, I know. A nail. You're fucking, I put my hand good. down. And Grasso's coming on his bicycle, G-R-A-S-S-O. And his name was, yeah, Craig Grasso. Grasso. And he, Grasso. he Grasso. slides, he, he was about to jump off the thing, and he, he slides in his, his top, he goes <laughs> off the end of the thing, and his bike lands on top of my hand like that and takes all the skin off the bottom of my fingers. <laughs> yeah. so Dude, you have some like, bad luck, man. Oh, oh. <laughs> but... We drive around for a month in Florida, set up the ramp, do the demos. We go to, to Daytona Beach. We set up the ramp. I'm like, hey, we'll demo for free if you let us stay here. I got us kicked out because I drank 22. Dude, you were getting like slow motion crucified on this trip. It was yeah, I know. That's what I was going to say. Dude, you got it was a bad deal. I got anyway. But this is me looking at this is the skateboard business. These are pro. These guys are going to demos. These are the shops, and it made me kind of. It made me go, oh wow, this is like a network of bros. This is a network. Everybody is psyched. Yeah. It's such a small family. I got to see like not that how it works, but I'm like, this is real. This is a legitimate thing. I didn't care about anything. I don't care about Apple computers. I don't care about going to school and becoming a doctor or a lawyer. I'm like, this is this is happening. Skateboarding yeah. is happening. And and 
And it wasn't about getting rich. It was like... There was no money to get rich back then either, There was though. a handful of people that were selling, you know, you had not a selling boards. And, oh, yeah, 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 you know, they, yeah, the, yeah, that's true. But the average person who was involved in it was not getting rich unless they owned the company. But it was like, you know what? I can be a part of this. My friends and the people I want to hang out with are part of this. I don't care about my high school. I mean, God bless them, but I'm like, I, I don't even care about... I want punk rock and skateboarding and, Best. and yes. you know, just, yeah. and so going on that tour, we come back, we come back, I'm staying with, I'm staying with uh, Losi or Yearman. I'm doing the couch tour. We go to San Jose for the Raging Waters contest. Ben Schroeder yeah. wins the best trick contest. We're at this party. Yes, it's so fucking gnarly. Like J-Ram, that. Yeah, that boomerang. Elbow. I didn't I go there. Boomerang. I didn't go boomerang. there, but I remember. I get arrested for drunk in public. Uh -huh. And I have to stay there and go to court. So I can't go on the su summer tour with Tony Dwyer. Who goes? Todd Prince. Todd, oh, Todd Prince goes. Prince. Not that I was skateboarding. I mean, I would, I could do wall rides and I could, by that time, I could do like a early grab method air off the launch. Yeah, 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 yeah. I could do slappies, but. But Todd went on. But I can't. What yes. summer was this? What's what? 88. Oh, okay. 88. Damn, we're so, still in the 80s, bro. But I know. Oh, we got a lot going. <laughs> yeah. The 80s we must have been yeah. fun. Yeah, We've yeah. been jumping back <laughs> right? and forth in the 80s, 90s. Kitty yeah. Warehouse is 90, 91. Not yet. No, no, the skate park was 91. But, you know, San Jose. But anyway, all of that right there was like to see all of that San Jose, Inland Empire. It's Florida. We went all over Florida to see all of that was like. This is it. Fucking, why, why would you? I ain't doing nothing else. Yeah, why yeah. would you want to do anything else? Everything else is lame. Yeah. Not, it's not, it's it's like, but then it got dicey just shortly after this time period. I was telling you that I have these binders at home. Yeah. But it's like this wide on a shelf. It's just all pages. And going back to the NHS. Yeah, so yeah. This time, I'm after he had introduced me to them, <laughs> I was shooting quite a bit, like, Everybody on there. I got to be really good friends with Tom Knox. Wound up playing in bands with him and shooting dressing. Yes. And I remember the first time I, I think I went shot with Nottis was, I think he was still there before 101. Yeah, yeah. SMA, and, um, right, yeah. So I have all that stuff. And I was telling you there was a time when I got really burnt. Right, and right. I, was, I used to write on those sheets how much I got paid. And there would be like Santa Cruz full page shots in the magazine, like in Thrasher, and it would say 40 bucks at the bottom. So fucked up. And they had like all, they were like big. They had money. They, yeah, they were it was real big. big. You're talking like, yeah. I, yeah. This is just speed right on us. Wheels, yeah. Speed wheels. They had the soy rockets. They had regular San OJ. The Cero Streets of even Fire. had his own. Had the Cero, SMA. Yeah. Then SMA left. Then they did Sims. But they yeah. were doing okay. They were definitely doing remember, okay, and they should definitely be paying you more than fucking forty dollars. Like a sequence for forty bucks. That's fucking crazy. I remember being like, I, so nice, I'm like, I had to, I just, I had to buy like five rolls of film to get that sequence. You know? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> but you, it, hey, they, crazy. I so they, hey, they put Novak paid for my education because when I got to go and stay in Indonesia and be at the factory and see everything happen and and all the stuff that happened before and after that. I'm learning on someone else's dime. It'd be kind yeah. of like if you're an amateur and you get to ride for a company and they're not going to turn you pro, but you get to see how things work. You're like, you know. Yeah, yeah. You yeah or you get to meet people. You did and, travel. Travel. Yeah. and so yeah. it's easy to say, oh, they did this or they did that. But it's like, at some point in time, I look back, I'm like, no, I'm super grateful because it's the highs and the lows. Yeah. Sure, no, there's sure. good and bad. Yeah, I, I, but, I don't, but, I don't care know, for Santa Cruz skateboards, but dude, I fucking, I, I got to... Uh, the, the, in the beginning, dude, like, Keno was rad, dude, but I got to fucking meet Jason Jesse, become good yeah. friends with him. Yeah. Fucking Ross Goodman. Yeah. Just, just, like, through through Santa Cruz, I, I met JJ and Todd and yeah. fucking skated with Bod and all these. Like, so, like, that part was sick, you know? Yeah. And uh, got to go on tour with Sal, like, all these fucking chefs, like, through NHS. That yeah. was rad. I don't care, like, they're, I don't like, like, they're, the, the they're, I don't know. It's, a, it's just cheesy to me. It's like a toy company or something. No, but I back mean, then, it was, they were tough. Like, they had Olsen, Dwayne. Like, yeah. they were rad back in the day. And it, it, I don't know, something really, like they... They had a really the, rad... There was a time... I don't know. They didn't they stick with really, their... Something happened. I mean, obviously... Well, you know what? Keenan, Birdo, split. all these people left. Like, certain companies. Lucero went and did Black Label. Hasoy was gone. Yeah. SMA was gone. So then they had... They had yeah. When when people when it gets dicey situations like that, and I've just if looking back on it and think like sometimes there's been dicey situations I've worked at you know through skateboarding or being a photographer or working at companies, but it pushed me into another yeah, situation so and made you. another Did door open, and I'm just like oh. 
Thank God. Yeah, you know? thank you for being <laughs> shitty over here. I'm gonna go fuck yeah, cut out. Here. Go, yeah, yeah. Didn't you go to DC after that? Didn't you? Weren't you some somehow affiliated? No, I those? took I took a couple years off. Remember, I was telling you about. Yeah. I helped another guy shoot photos. And then um, I wound up at um, Foundation. Tom Yetto. And, Foundation. Tom and I did those those crazy tours where we would go from, in the summertime in a pan, van, we'd get in a van and go from San Diego up to New York, um, like Niagara Falls, down to Florida, through Tampa and all that, back over to like Seattle, Vancouver, and then back. Todd Swank. Uh, yeah, this right? would be, these, these tours were gnarly. I'm talking about. Like, that was days of Todd Swank and. Yeah, yeah Swank. Yeah, for, Todd uh, Swank. Who else was on the team? Josh uh, Beagle. The, the, yeah, was like, at that jo- time? Kurt Chart, Muska. Kurt, oh, okay. Jamie Thomas. Oh, Muska rode yeah, for yeah. Mon- no, Musk ride for Toy Machine because it was Tom Yetto, so it'd be Oh, yeah, yeah, combined. those are both. Okay, I gotcha, gotcha. So, I, mean, I forgot, Ed Templeton was there. Ed Templeton. He, yeah. yeah, he wasn't in the band most of the time, but... So you got to go on tours Donnie, with all Donnie those... Donnie Barley, Donnie like, oh, dude, it was so Paul Sharp, like, yeah, Steve Bar- Olsen. You know, yeah, yeah, Steve, Steve Olsen. Yeah, Steve Olsen. Yeah, Super Co. Like, but I wouldn't have had that. Yeah. I wouldn't have had that. I wouldn't have been in that position had... Because I was, like, going down the NHS road, like, shooting a lot of stuff for them. This was, like, 90. Like they're all the catalog covers shooting. Yeah, a bunch they of have stuff. so much shit. And then it was on. just weird not getting paid. And then I took about two, almost two years off. And then Swank was like, "What are you doing? You know? Yeah, come work for me. You know? That's fucking cool." Yeah, and I went and worked for him for a while. And then, uh, and then, uh, and then uh, after, yeah, and then after that, I got a call to go work for DC. And I went and worked for DC. DC. I was there for the first Damon five years. Way, right? Damon yeah, Way. Kent Block, yeah, he's yeah. a good dude. Man. I heard of him. That was gnarly. <laughs> yeah. I got to There's... go on all those super tours and oh. Europe and. When Huff was on the team, and Carol, and Rick Howard, and Colin, and Danny, and Rudy Johnson, yeah, those Scott trips must have been crazy. King huh? Gale uh, got to go all yeah, over the world yeah. with those guys. They were the new That's kids cool. on the, like all of a sudden the DC and Plan B. And those shoes are crazy, dude. Back and they then. had money, and they were cool, man. They were yeah, like, that's they were when that they were works so out like that. cool to work with. You know, like Danny would come in and be like, hey, "I got this idea to like." get pulled by a motorcycle after seeing Matt Hoffman. Yeah, yeah, And then yeah. we went down and got, got, this is nuts. We did that thing in Brownfield, built that ramp that got, and got the helicopter. The mega ramp. The, the first You're super ramp. That, uh, I bid that whole project. I yeah, did that yeah. whole entire thing. I didn't, I, I, I hired Tim Payne, but I did all the producing on that. I produced the whole entire thing. Where he did the biggest air, right? Breaking yeah, the, the first biggest air one, and the jumping out of the helicopter. The first one in 97 in Brownsfield. It was in August of 97. And but Stewart these, took the or sniped the phone. No, yeah, he sniped it. I'll say it. But we'll get, keep going what you're saying, then we'll get oh, into but that anyways, part. Yeah, yeah but so I mean, so, so yeah, I had some. Dan it was, Stewart, that's mm. another story. Yeah. So from getting in and dealing with NHS, and then it's Tom Yetto, I wind up at DC. And then once I got there, and those guys got it, because that was Danny's brother. Yep. You know, and Ken, they just got it. Yeah. Like when Danny would have this, we did that whole project. I remember I walked into him, I was thinking, like, there's no way they're going to pay for this. You know, Danny, Danny told me what he wanted to do. I put it all together, budgeted it all out, got a hold of pain, got all the costs, got everything. Yeah. Paperwork. Had to, I had to create deaths, death release forms. Just in case the motherfucker died? In case Danny died. Yeah. yeah. And Colin, whoever whoever skated that ramp, had to sign something. If I die, That's so rad. it's because I chose to do this. Do you still like, got that paper? Yeah, yeah I got it. I have, yeah. I have those. I have no, you got fucking way. way. That's sick. Except you've got little photo files, and I've got did, a garage full of... I did that whole thing hands. down there... Sturt sniped it, which is like the biggest compliment in the world. You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. Dude, he's he's hands down my favorite photographer in the world of all time. Yeah, I met him. I met him before at, at Bob Burnquist, man. I was like, no, no way. He, he just he had to call to escape Bob's. Like we we're, we're, I was with Grindline, we we're cementing that fucking big uh, vert, the ramp he had, the ball oh, vert, yeah, yeah, the over vert yeah. thing. But I was with Hubbard and them, and we cemented it. And uh, we were out there for months, staying in a yurt, but. We fucking go to get the tool, I don't know, cement, whatever. We came back, and we're still, like, concrete and deep, but, like, the shallow end was done, and it's fucking Stewart skating it. And not one person was, like, because it still was, like, uh, drying. Yeah, like, yeah. you want to uh, say, hey, dude, get... Curing or whatever, you know, Nobody's like... Nobody's saying, get out of there. Yeah, <laughs> Stewart, like, everyone's like, let the motherfucker skate. It's Dan Stewart. <laughs> yeah, but he sniped the photo, huh? right? Didn't he, like, sneak up on a fucking... Yeah, so what I did is I had I had the... Who I was remember, that? remember when I put this whole thing together, Ken Block gave me the option. He said, you want to shoot this thing? What do you want to do, you know? And I said, well, I go, it'd be, I don't think it'd be in our best interest for me to shoot it. I'll shoot the POP and the ad, you know, the two-page spread and the poster. Yeah. I said, but it'd be in our best interest if we go and get 
some select people to be there with us. And I went and had a meeting with Transworld, so I had Grant and Dave Swift there and Skin Phillips there. Mm -hmm. And I uh, had Thomas Campbell come in and shoot that. Thomas, right. And, um, and Sturt somehow found out about it, probably through Danny, you know what I mean? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And um, he, what he did is he had this white pickup truck <laughs> and he wore, he got like a carrot suit type of situation or the vest or something and a hard hat and got everything he needed to gear up to look like security there. Yeah, yeah. And he remember, I remember I hired him years later when I relaunched Skateboarder Magazine, like maybe three or four years later. Mm -hmm. to, and I hired him to do a Tony Hawk interview. So I got, you know, I talked to him. And I, I mean, I, you gotta imagine, I've been, I've been kind of crossing paths with Sturt since the Power Edge days. He was there for that. Were you cool with them? Yeah, totally. Cool. Always cool with him. He, he, yeah. he was always, he's always nice to me. You know. Yeah, I mean? that's great. That's so I mean, I've always thing. tried to just put money in his pocket yeah. and, and give him all the respect in the world. You know what yep. I mean? Because that guy is just a fucking legend. He in is. Photography. Yeah. But he later on when I had him shoot, I went and ran, got the ramp down by uh, in San Diego off the eight that was out there by that big stadium to do a Hawk interview for Skateboarder, like probably the second or third one when they relaunched it in 99, 2000. And um, I remember saying, I remember I had a little conversation with him about that. Yeah, yeah. He's like, oh, dude, you know, I was like literally like 40 feet away from you. And I was like, no, you weren't. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> he says, I was right behind you, man. And they used the photo, right? Then they use This is crazy what happened. So we did that whole project and we can basically, I got all those photographers together because I thought their uh, trans world was just, you know what I mean? They're, this is shit. Yeah, know, yeah. At that point, a time I didn't have the contacts at Thrasher to do that at that time. Right. I mean, I knew dudes, but it it was like after Mofo was gone, and I think Bryce was gone. It was like transitioning. I think at that point. Right. At, at any rate, I um. So this right, we do we do the whole project. We're going to launch Danny's whatever shoe, the ads, the POP, everything all at the same time. It's going to all come together with the trans world. Thrasher comes out like almost a month ahead of time. It's on the cover. So, so we're yeah. like we're like we're like we were we weren't pissed. We and well, you, how can you get mad if Sturt snipes your shit? You know it's coming out on Transworld on the cover. He snipes it, gives it to Fosto. Fosto runs a cover and then runs a piece on it. Yeah. So this is what happened. This is amazing. A lot of people don't know this. I spent all in helicopter, wood, tin pain, brownfield. And I don't know how many millions of dollars of liability insurance, you know, to put that project together. I did yeah. a legit, like how I would do a photo shoot today. Right. 28 grand. 28 grand. Like, Danny, I that. saw Danny a while that's back. Serious. Danny's like, oh, well, you couldn't do that for a million dollars now that you did. It it so, I was going to say, that seems very little. So we get the call. Yeah. So at this time at DC, it's not just Ken and Damon. Clay Blem is there. And Clay, Clay was like a gnarly banker they got to be the third part partner for that. Right. Which was what pretty really helped DC financially and business-wise really just when it just blew, it exploded. Right. He was there to make sure all that stuff handled legit. The, somehow or another, between the three of those guys, they got a call in to, uh, to Fosto and said, Fosto, we're suing you for industrial espionage. You're releasing this project before we got a chance to release it. Fosto gave them a year's worth of spreads in Thrasher to settle that. Really? So yeah. So we got the cover of Transworld, we got the cover of Sugar, we got the cover of Thrasher. We got something like all together in, I want to say, 50 plus pages of um, editorial. And at that time, I think we we equated that to about uh, an equalization of cost of about 5,000 a spread. Yeah. So we got probably 20, 25 spreads. So it's like a hundred and over a hundred thousand dollars worth of editorial, you yeah. know, um, presence or impressions Damn. plus the cover of thrasher plus we got a whole nother years worth of spreads out of thrasher for free to settle yep. the industrial espionage thing and, yeah. that. and we did all that for 28 grand 28 yeah. what a fucking trip yeah the That's... helicopter the helicopter was only like 1500 bucks what year was the helicopter's that? still here it's at palomar airport road i went down where's it at a couple years ago on Palomar Airport Road, Palomar, Palomar Airport. Okay. The helicopter's yeah. still All there. Right. Yeah. yeah, it's still there. I know, I know what you're talking about. Yeah. It's still there. It's in a hangar no there. No way. Yeah. They're still using How it. gnarly was that? Dude, that was so gnarly. Dan Danny took us like four or blasting. five days to build that ramp. The ramp was up for three days. Um, those guys... Uh, he did like a 16-foot air, right? Wasn't it yeah, like 16 a 16? and a half foot air. And then he did like a 14-foot kickflip indie grab or something too? Indie uh, grab? I have all that footage at home. It was gnarly. Yeah. Um, Colin, so sk fun. Colin skated it. 
I think Ellis tried to skate it, or, you know, yeah. he could skate it, you know what I mean? But yeah. he wasn't blasting airs like those guys. I remember, I think, him being like, oh, dude, you guys are gnarly, you know? Colin McKay was blasting, too? Yeah, Colin McKay was blasting on it. Ty skated it. Ty Evans skated it. Yeah, he, so. could, he could skate vert, right? Yeah, he yeah. skated vert. Yeah. He was a vert skater. Okay. Yeah. And, uh, yeah, he skated. That's right. He was, that's like, right. doing shit on it. Yeah, I think I've seen some footage just not too long ago of him skating vert. I can't I remember where I skated did. it, but that was about it. Skated it. And then everything that Danny did, he did in one afternoon. Like, he did it all. The, all that footage was all yeah, one like day, he, right? He came down the first day, skated it, tried skating it. We were having some issues in that the roll-in had such a steep, tight transition at, at the, the bottom, bottom of the roll-in yeah. that it was knocking him. He couldn't get through it. Yeah. I mean, he could do it, but he couldn't. He couldn't oh, get 60 foot of air. fucking yeah. blast. So we tore that whole runway, that whole big runway on the side down that drop in, that roll in down. We tore that thing down and Payne put this like ginormous, like 16 foot transition or something on the bottom of it. And then extended that thing up. It was just barely higher than the ramp, I think. Yeah, yeah. You know, which was 20 feet. And then he extended that thing up another like 10 or he 13 feet. Fucking make it. Daddy was gnarly. Dude. He's fucking just a gnarly Daddy human. Daddy shows up fucking this thing. Being. This, thing's dude. Out, this thing's out of control, intense, just to roll in. And, and Danny's not like, oh, no, no, whatever. This ain't going to work out. He's like, oh, no, make no, it I'm gnarlier. Gonna, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to get some of that right there. Make it gnarlier. You ain't taking no for an answer. So I remember. That was 97. That was August of 97. And they weren't building ramps that big. That's even that before the, Mega Ramps, right? Yeah, right. that was all right. based off of what Hoffman did with the 20 foot quarter That's where pipe. you got the idea. Fucking when, Matt Hoffman doing a 25 fucking that. foot yeah. and Brent towed by yeah, a towed by a motorbike. He was like, so the, yeah, I, have, yeah, I have a folder at home that has that whole project is in it as far as the paperwork and everything. Yeah. And the original drawings and that Danny right. did. And in the beginning, it was going to be Damon pulling him in on a motorcycle, the same way Matt did. Yeah, yeah. And then Payne got there, and Payne was the guy like, oh, no, you should make it, you know, this should be a half-pipe. You can make a sick rolling. Yeah, make, it should make a half-pipe. And then the helicopter was just, I hired the helicopter. That wasn't planned out, right? That, Danny was, just not, fucking... that was not planned out. The helicopter was, to for, shoot, I to told shoot. Ken I wanted a helicopter in the photograph. Take the overview yeah. shot, Yeah, right? so the main POP point of purchase thing in the two-page ad it's like there's an airplane wing in one side of it, and then the ramp, and Danny's just blasting his for air. Scale. And then there's a helicopter. Yeah, it's all for scale. And the helicopter is only 1500 bucks, and I thought, oh, this would be cool, too. I'll fly Ken and Damon down there for the day in it. You yeah. know what I mean? And I'll just have them fly down because it was just, we would drive by that every day going to work. Right, right, right. And then Danny's just there, and he's just like, oh, she's just like, oh. Can you have a talk with the pilot? You know, and he goes, I think I'm gonna jump out of this thing. No <laughs> fucking way, dude. <laughs> jump out of the That's so yeah. fucking sick. I, I, took, took, I, I, I want to say the pilot's name was Tom. I, I can't remember. Ooh. I told Tom, I go, like, dude, he wants to jump out of this thing. Just like, bring it on. He did. He wasn't tripping. Like, right. dude, he what was the not fuck? tripping at all. The only thing he, the only thing he really cleared, we had to tear down the ropes. They were in the background for the, the there was these ropes for markers. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, tear that down. He was a helicopter pilot was sketched on that being oh, there. Oh, for the height markers. For the height markers. Yeah. Because like, I'm going to have to be there. Those things are going to be within like Fucking six get wrapped up blade. or something. Yeah. yeah. So we tore those Sketchy. down. And then he just, um, he explained to me what needed to happen. And Danny came in and, da and the guy just told him, he said, no matter what you do, don't jump. Don't jump. Yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. Don't spring off of it. He says, you'll push that side of the helicopter down while you're jumping up. You'll push the blade down. Oh, while you're jumping. Cut you in oh, half. He says, you, need to, you have to fall out of the helicopter. Free falling. Was, Tom Petty in the heart for free falling, dude. <laughs> yeah. It all goes in a circle yeah. and comes back. Right? Dude, yeah. and, and that was fucking crazy. Yeah, Danny, Danny did it. it you he did it three times. That. Three he times and the third one he made it? Yeah, the first, time, the first time he jumped. Did he fuck his elbow up too? No, he compressed his sp spine. Yeah, I wish it was. It would have been something that simple. He was hurt. You know, D Danny's typical. And he'll get back up. Every one anyways. of those things, like the China broke his ankle. Yeah. He compressed his spine. spine. I, have it, I have the video of it. He fell out of the helicopter and he was too far over the coping. So he basically didn't get any transition. Oh, when he bailed out. Yeah, he got the transition when it just... The first sheet, you know? Yeah. Jake Brown. Straight to his knees. Jake Brown style. Yeah. He did How high was thing. he above the, the ramp? It was a 16-foot ramp, right? 20. 20-foot 20 ramp. It was 20, and the helicopter, I'm going to say, it was probably 13, 12 or 13 at least. 33. Above the helicopter. So he's, above the, above he's, like, th he's yeah. 30, three and a half story. Three off three half the ground. Story off the, the ground. Th and he went down that first time. He probably So he probably fell that first time at least 25 feet straight Boom, knees, knee, knee foot on the ground, straight to knees, you know, like oh. instinctual.
Uh, he compressed his spine. He was hurt, man. He was hurt bad. And he fucking got back up. He, like, like, he just was there, man. He was just like kind of mental about it. And all of a sudden, he's like, oh, again, again. Let's go get it. Let's yeah, get this. And then he kind of made it. And then, and then he made it. Yeah, he like landed and zipped out or something, right? Like, or no, like, he made it. He made it all the way to the deck, the last one. He made it the, all no, the way. No, but the, the ones side. before that, yeah, though, right? Like he, he landed and he fucking, yeah. 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 He zipped out. And then, no, go and then he was, dude, I remember was seeing that like, and I was just like, dude, this he is was fucking like, sick. He goes, He's like, we're done. we're done, we're done, we're done, we're shut down. We're shut yeah, the whole you time make, shut down. yeah, you make the fucking next wall, dude, like, that's yeah. it, dude. He, he fucking shut it down. And then three years later, I remember. I was, yeah, you said you were there. They went and redid it in Vegas. I was doing Vegas. stuff. It was 2000. I got sober September the 1st, 1999. I was doing stuff for workshop. I've been doing stuff for them for years, but. I had been back and forth with the drinking thing, and then finally I met with like Chris Carter and Mike Hill and those guys at the trade show in Long Beach, and they knew they they just knew because I'd been solid the whole time, and things yeah. were kind of slipping. We're talking about a lot of money in production, a lot of a lot of stuffs tied up in it, and you know hundreds of thousands of dollars. And like, hey, Carter's like, look, I'm not going to tell you what to do, but just the alcohol. He's like, you have to, and I didn't tell him that I was drinking or whatever. He's like, I think I saw him at a trade show, and they knew like. They're like, oh, like you have to stop. So I've been sober for 30 some days and Carter's like, hey, if you want to, Danny's jumping out of a helicopter into a ramp in, in Vegas and you want to show up, we'll put you up and everything. And I'm like, okay, cool. And I drove out there and so I got to watch. I remember sitting at this giant banquet table and you know, all the, you know, Ken Ball, all the DC people were there, workshop, different people, mm -hmm. magazine people. And then Andy, I mean, uh, um, Danny. Danny jumped out of the helicopter again. I remember he fell. Oh, into that big quarter pipe, right? Isn't that, that was different? Half pipe. It was a, it was the ramp on top of the parking garage at the Hard Rock Cafe. No, like, didn't he I drop feel it? Like he did that twice up there. Too. He dropped in. Didn't he drop, jump off the fucking guitar or something? That was a whole different deal. That was, that was, that was Danny though, right? That was, that was like a year later. Oh, that's later. Okay. No, but he I don't... jumped out of the helicopter and he kind of he kind of looped out when he got to the bottom and he put his arm down, slapped his arm down. Pulled his arm out of the socket. Fucking yeah. gnarly. And then he went again and he made yeah. it. Dude, damn this. Yeah, there, there ain't no one like. There ain't no, no one, no one built like that motherfucker no. at all. God. Tony he Hawk fucking had, rad. Tony Hawk had already done the 900, but he did it that time. I mean, to see it in person, there was. He did on, it on that ramp. Yeah, yeah, and it was on the roof of the Hard Rock Cafe's parking lot. So I it's at that. the top of this yeah. building. I remember watching it and then afterwards because I I knew I'd known Danny for years, and. I'm like, I go, hey man, can I try your board? And everyone's talking. I'm like, you know what? I suck at skateboarding, but I've got almost any pool I've gone to or any ramp, I'd always at least be able to throw up a front side grind. Yeah, I'm yeah, like, hell I'm yeah. Grind this. yeah. But I don't realize he's riding 215s. The wheels the are trucks 60, don't turn. The They're wheels gnarly, are 66s. Yeah, yeah. The board is is 10 inches wide. You know, it's a yeah. big operation. But I like run up as far as I can and I start going. And I'm going back and forth, and all of a sudden I realize I'm getting, I'm like, I'm literally like this far from the from the top. I'm like, I'm going to hit this. And I'm coming down. I'm like, God, just like one more, two more walls. And then I look at all the people at the bottom, and I'm not wearing any pads. I'm like, I'm like fuck, I'm going like 25 miles an hour here. This is, <laughs> yeah. you're going really fast. Oh, you skated on that ramp? Oh, yeah, yeah. I got, to, I was like, I'm going to grind it. On Danny's board. <sighs> I feel like that was a 23-foot tall ramp, and the first one was a 20. I think that was the first 23-foot ramp. All I know is I, I don't know. I could be wrong. Though. All That's I know massive. is I'm like 18 inches below the coping, and I'm coming down. I'm like, okay, one more <laughs> pump, and I start to look at all the people at the bottom. I'm like, I'm about to eat shit and die. Man. <laughs> yeah. Not die, but yeah, I'm yeah. Like, I was thinking, I'm like, I'm gonna shoot. Everyone's paint talking to Danny at the bottom. I'm like, what am I doing? I'm yeah. Just, I'm gonna fall in front of everyone. I'm gonna shoot my board into Susie Q's legs. And I just, <laughs> yeah. I'm like, you know. Aboard, aboard. Yeah, we, yeah. Were, we were burlap, burlap uh, sliding down the roll in at the 97 one. And uh -huh. then I think it was 99. It was MD, MTV Music and Sports Festival. I remember was. this was 2000. Vegas. It was 2000 because yeah. I'd been sober for like 40 days. Okay. And there was a girl that worked for I think DC. I had it two years of that. Yeah. yeah. That was the same helicopter that we used in the first one that was there. I just I remember crazy. looking at it. I knew that. Yeah, Danny's on. a fucking like, just gnarly. Well, you just don't you don't realize how gnarly it, you don't realize how gnarly it is and how big. And then you're like, transitions are so big. You're like, man, they're going so fast, and those boards are so big and heavy. There was other people skating that ramp too. I remember there was like it was a contest. Yeah, wow. They had some kind of like contest. those like those mega ramps are fucking like Danny even bit like 
I, I went to bought, like I said, we concrete this thing and he had the, the mega ramp in the back. Yeah. Seeing that in fucking person, yeah, it, it was fucking scary. I was like, yeah, you're holy like, fucking shit. And the roll in, the jump, I was just like, this is fucking Our, crazy. Remember that first one that we did in 97? That was only 20 foot, but we were just like looking at it and it was like, this is. This is no way. This massive, Nothing's dude. happening it's here. Fuck, like, you're just like, what the? <laughs> we're looking before, you know, I'm there, I'm there for four days with Tim Payne building it before. And Tim Payne stayed at my house that whole time. Yeah. And I'm just, when we're building this thing, I'm just looking at it. Tim, Tim's just like, Tim was like, oh, yeah, this is going to be dope. You know, I'm looking at it going like, you guys are out of control, dude. This yeah. Is, this Amazing is never, never going to work. Make, just... <laughs> Oh, the 20 like footer was just mind blowing. You know? Yeah, yeah. Now, the new ones are even, I don't know what they are, 23, 25. Yeah, yeah something big. like that. 70 yeah. feet tall. You could fucking die on those things. Yeah. Oh, come on, Jake yeah. Brown. Come on, look at Danny. Yeah, Jay. Danny like fucking took a, a gnarly shin. Remember that one yeah. where he fucking oh. hung up? Yeah. Just Bob ragdoll. took a fucking ragdoll. crazy one. I didn't even realize how gnarly the, the drop in was. Until I was talking to Cab about it, I'm like, oh, man. You know, he's like, man, I just got to go skate uh, Bob's ramp. And I'm like, how was he? He goes, he goes, got to tell you the truth. He goes, I've done a lot of stuff. He goes, when I got to, and we've been riding motocross motorcycles together. I used to come up here, like this area. Yeah, this is all motorcycles. Like deep history yeah. out here with a lot of people riding yeah. and, and fun. And um, I remember Cab was looking at, look at me. He goes, you know what? Because when I went to the top of that thing, the first time I dropped in, he goes, I was scared shit. He goes, I was afraid. He goes, I was really afraid. He goes, it's gnarly. And ain't he goes, no joke. He's like, when you get that high and you realize, you know, you're going to be going Mach 5 <laughs> by the time you get to the bottom. And yeah. I just thought, I'm like, man, fuck. You know, none of this would have happened if I didn't have some sketchy situations. Yeah, 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 right? Seriously. Whatever, just the forty dollar full page ads. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Do it right. Just, exactly. Exactly. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> Somewhere I have a photo that you took, and you know when you like you got you can skateboard, but you know when you like someone takes photos and you're like frothing to get the footage, you're like, oh yeah, I'm gonna I'm oh, gonna look so good. <laughs> yeah. And you see the photo, and you're like, oh, I, that's it you know like yeah. for me yeah and i have a photo of i'm like wearing smith gloves and i'm doing like a method air but just totally i mean i'm yeah. at the fountain like jumping off i oh, know i need that sheet back i think i there's figured photos out of the, you on that i know but i think those other photos i couldn't tell i think it's swindell it? i think they're josh swindell i, I just talked right. to him the other day He's man, I love that guy. He's, he's so a good nice. fucking dude. There's I just nice. talked to him the, two, great, like two days ago great. I, I'm yesterday maybe i think started shooting photos of him when he was like 15. yeah I right. just found this sheet of photos from the fountain. From out there. He's and I was like, hey, can really? you scan Ranch these? Yeah. Okay. I'm like, can you scan these photos? And he scanned them, and there were photos that I took of him. I need some photo credit. I got good photos of you. You got your hat sideways. You're getting <laughs> no, but but, yeah. um, but that then, thing was sketchy. The fountain was sketchy. That's the I hardest thing. That that's hard I could grind it. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I could grind that's it, fucking, whatever. I could do do little inverts, like right at the bottom of it, you know. Yeah, the shit these dudes are doing now is I fucking do crazy. Inside. Oh, so you see insane. people like five o fakey, then come in, kick flip in, or whatever. Yeah, they're doing backs and nose, all kinds of shit. But I think I've seen some footage of Costin. I don't think I don't know if he was skating it, but he was there recently. Yeah, that'd be so awesome. Ray Barbie him. had a photo. Crooked ad uh, doing a front side ollie like blender. It's that a was fun pretty spot. fucking cool. It's a really Have you ever been there? Yeah, I skated there a couple times, a few times. It's fun. It's rad. But Matt, when it's we were skating, easy. it was wet. It was always wet. Yeah, because it was shooting out that, the water, that, right? Yeah. No, yeah. that's the thing. You'd have to skate. The, depending on how the wind, the wind was blowing, was going. you'd oh, skate okay, the okay. side yeah. where, you so know. Like, yeah. And if your board went in there, then you were stuck. But the opposite, yeah, yeah, yeah. The, the opposite side of where they're skating it now was better. It had way better run up and everything. Yeah. Yeah. If somebody threw the bitch beater and it just came like this out of the sky. And <laughs> the almost bitch beater. Oh. Remember, people would be on that overhead, that bridge up there, and they'd just be saying the most random, weird stuff to us. There, were, there was hate speech. I this recall. is still like you're getting like jocks and stuff, you know, we're like, oh, oh yeah. Stupid skaters, like, you know. Yeah, yeah, yeah dude, I got. They were skaterphobic. Skaters was... weren't liked back then. Not cool. Man, was not, cool. not cool at was all. Not cool they then. were, the steps you could ride down on the other side of the street, you could go down these bricks like this wide and just there, like, Across ride. the street from that, there's a fucking uh, oh, a transition with the wall wow. ride thing. But the transition you guys is see like, that? it goes to, at, at this tall, it's vert. But you could, e you know, easily ride up it. And see, yeah. back then, the noses were this big. So it was not even a, right, you have right. to try. You don't have to worry about your nose. What like, was the little stickers you'd put on? It said something grip on it. Like these little spongy stickers. Rip grip. On the nose, you put it underneath grip. the nose to the grab it. 
<laughs> See, that's that. Remember those little, like... <laughs> yeah, Santa Cruz would make the fucking... Herbie Fletcher came up with that, and Santa Cruz... Stole it? Say, or not, I don't no, know. No, they somehow I got a hold of it, and I, and I, I, I don't... Skateboards. Say, we'll put it on fucking I skateboards. Say, I don't want to say, but... I didn't um, mean to say it, but I, I, I don't, I don't I, care. I think either. they somehow... I think Herbie got the short end of the stick. You know? Yeah, because they put that and, shit on snow or uh, sur surfboards. Well, that yeah, because Astro Deck. And yeah. Remember the last time I was on the other podcast, you'd ask me like famous people I made stuff for, and I forgot them. Like, you wait, know what? Well, so, wait, so how did you guys meet? San Jose. San Jose. Yeah. I like uh, the, the skate park. Uh, yeah, at the skate park. I met you in Santa Cruz, going out to Santa Cruz High School, and then we went and skated Buena. Yeah. Skated a few times, and we went and skated some other pools with Swank. Remember, I went up there with Swank one time. We skated Buena, I think was. We went to, we I was went to Buena pool. with Swank, and then we went to some other pool that was like in Los Gatos, like right by, where, oh, uh, right by uh, where Kevin Thatcher lived. It was uh, the shotgun ball or grand, where the grandma with lived. JJ, like, JJ was there with us. Yeah, we yeah, JJ, JJ yeah. Doing front side, stand up front side rocks and the uh, yep. shallow yep. rim, I think. Dude, JJ did the sickest front side rock and roll. Yeah, he did. Especially in the pool. Yeah, dude, those dudes are. He had the sickest style, I, I fucking, if it wasn't for those dudes, I would never be the skateboarder I, I am. Like, I keep saying dude, it. Dude, they were just like, rad dudes. Did you go yeah, to they the were San fucking Jose, radical. Did you go to the San Jose contest, the big Y ramp? Yeah, yeah. JJ fucked that ramp yeah, up. Dude, I just seen some footage cab, of it the other day. Dude, half ramp. cab, fake rock fakey, right on the extension. Off the extension, alley -oop. Boom. Boom. Yeah. Just, JJ was. He was, just, and, and he was just so, like I said, he was a fucking big dude. Teddy bear. And he was a teddy bear. Yeah, he was he fucking. He was. He could skate everything and he was fucking first, annihilated. He was the All first train guy, vehicle. First guy I saw do a slappy on a highway divider cable. The, the barriers, dude. Slappy transfer. Yeah. Slappy Smith grind transfer. Like, he, oh, he, okay. But without the, like no. how they they fucking the concrete it. Going trucks. No. <laughs> Con, co, like uh, no, concrete. Quickly. No, he no, just no, wall no. ride Smith grind Street transfer, lip slide transfer over those those Super barriers. Early. I think Super he had early. a dog town out doing a bo ollie board slide on a shopping cart. Folder, you know. Yeah, yeah, uh, yeah. That video or something. No, he was. He's not. doing good now too, man. He's fucking good. For doesn't him. drink. He, he's got a lot of years. John sober. Jeffrey, good for him. JJ. Yeah, he, he's um, the fucking best. Yeah, he's and I, I can't remember if he's a. Does, all those guys came. There were so many rad dudes from Sacto. So San Jose and Sacto were way more connected. It seemed. There was dudes that came down from San Francisco. Yeah, Sacto like, and San Jose dudes always hung San out Jose, together. Did you, Windsor. Did you go I just seen him too, not too long. Me, Jason, Jesse, oh, wow. Jesse Pies I'm went down to, to Sacramento and ran. We stopped by uh, Ricky Windsor's work. Wow. Where you yeah, pairs of uh, motorcycles and basketballs and shit, yeah, dude. Oh, wow. Fucking raddest dude too. Oh, Ricky boy. Windsor rules. And Jeff Tolan was there. Wow. Yeah. Tolan. Ride motorcycle. Yeah. Tolan lives in Sacramento. I think yeah. He lives on the American River. Where's Ross Goodman these days? I, San dude, Diego. So I went to a skater con thing in Arizona, Tucson. And uh, Todd Prince was there, Craig Johnson, John Gibbs. So I hung out with all those dudes all weekend. And he fucking, I was asking about Ross. And he's like, dude, I got his number. Let's call him. And he's like, he never picks up. And he fucking answered. And I got to talk to Ross no, Goodman. So he lives down here. here somewhere. Yeah. Wow. Uh, somewhere fucking down this zone. Or San Diego, like somewhere. Somewhere down Fuck, here. I forgot, cool. but I Todd. To, I talked to him on Facebook, like Facebook messaging. Because I, yeah. yeah. I had boots. You know the photo of the Tom Knox graphic of the punk on the steps? Yeah, that punk? was Ross, right? That's Ross. Yeah. And I had Ross gave me those boots or I bought them or something at some point. Yeah. But that whole, you know how it is. You look back at the stuff that makes you, and I look at, I'm so grateful for everything, all the people I met, everything like that, because I had, you know, like a solid 30 years of making stuff. I got to make stuff for a lot of people. When I was coming down here, I made stuff for um, a company in Corona. I made stuff for Thor Motocross. I made stuff for Troy Lee Designs. I made stuff for a company called Alpine Stars. I did. Yeah, stuff I've heard all that stuff. You know, motorcycle was, shit. I was solely into motor. I was road racing, and I was in. I'm like, oh, I want to get gear. And the guy, my friend, was a TM for Thor Motocross, so I was making stuff for Emig and another guy that was a team guy there. But we'd come down here and ride all back. And I started to think of. Uh, I think we talked about Colby Raha the other day. Yeah. You know, back then, I'm really getting, I, I love skateboarding, but I've been riding motorcycles. I could actually ride a motorcycle fast. Like, <laughs> yeah, dude, motorcycle. If, if we went out with like crazy. 10 guys skateboarding, I'd be the dude that's like, they're like, come on, Slappy, come on, hurry, pick it up, boy. Yeah. You know, on a motorcycle, I'm like, I got this. I'm good. Or I could, I could ride okay. 
And um, I love that. And we'd come down here, and there were so many places to ride. I mean, this whole area, that's why the whole way down here, it's like, we used to ride all the Oh, there's right, right behind us, there's a fucking pro, uh, like, uh, racing track where all the pros... uh, The Fox place? Honda or some shit? I, I heard of Honda. Uh, There's KTM. KTM's here. Yeah, I've heard of. Them. You know that dude? That dude Twitch from yeah, like yeah. He he's got his spot. The Dirt Bike Kids is like right around oh, yeah. the corner. Yeah. So you'll these, see him pop up around this here. This whole area. I mean, Mets we're, we're we're pretty far from the Fox Raceway, right? Fuck, I don't know. Yeah. Are we? Yeah, the Solomon's there today. His kids are racing. Oh really? Both, oh, both his kids are racing. His That's daughter's racing Paul. too. Yeah, Paul. I will say he's a Paul. Yeah. Yeah, Paul's not too far though. But anyways, yeah, man, that was a that was a rad time period back then, you know. Yeah, fucking Mike, dude, we were talking earlier. Remember? We were? We were yeah. What did you guys talk about? <laughs> you were telling us, and I told you to hold up. This Can we hear you shit in your pants, dude? Oh, I'm just going to say it, dude. You were holding out on a story about the I want to hear the shit in your pants first, though, because you, you didn't J- want... You want Jason Jesse stories? Oh, yeah, 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 dude. Fuck yeah. Jason Jesse? Oh, uh, okay. Of course. Yeah. I'll give you one, because we, yeah, were, that was we were talking about his... Um, Whatever fucking awesome board. Yeah. Right. And this is this is what made me. So he had a this. Raiders hat on in the board. Yeah. He, the LA okay. Raiders. So it's definitely not. It's not, yeah. definitely not yeah. the picture yeah. I'm going to tell you about. And he's a little chubby. Yeah. He's a little chubby in that photo. I, I guess I never. Yeah. Like, uh, for, for Jason and him, always see, thinking. You know how he used to be like, I'm so fat to look. At yeah. Me. You know how he went through. And this he had covered it with tons right, of clothes. So but anyways, so, right there, yeah. Yeah. so when we were doing, I want to say the second skate book. Me and Solomon. Because you made some books. I just wanted yes, to yeah. you made yeah. some cool yeah. books. Yeah, I made we made, I don't know, six or seven of them or whatever. And big, thick coffee table books. They're like, dude, I just, I just, this is really I think random. I have one. I got an email yesterday from Amazon with a recommendation to buy the Cardiel cover book on yeah. there for 280 bucks. No way. <laughs> yeah, just the other day I was sitting there with somebody. I'm yeah. like, well, hey. the Amazon's recommending I buy something I made. Yeah, that's, but that's this is really hard. funny. So I think in that book... We went, uh, Solomon and I got in a car, got in my truck, and went to SF to go interview Phelps. Right. Now, we were just like, what's your favorite covers of all time? And we did an article about it, you know? Yeah. And um, took uh, another friend of mine, David, photo- another, like, there's Dan Sturt and David Ricketts, photographers that are just blow my mind. Right. That, those were your dudes. Yeah. Those are my two dudes. All right. So I took David up there to go up there and help do photography on it. And, um, we go up there, we have a nice sit down with Phelps, great, you know, awesome. Got to hang out with him up there in, in Thrasher, it, doing an article for Skatebook. <laughs> his his knowledge of fucking the magazines Brutal, and, and know gnarly, what photo gnarly, is in what issue, gnarly, what year, gnarly. like page. He, he's he got a memory, page. like yeah. he had a memory like he had an a elephant. Photographic memory. Photographic every memory. page of that thing where you could ask him, me and Solomon are asking him questions and he could just go right over to these drawers and pull it out and mm-hmm. do it. So we go out and do this trick. Like the rain. Man. No, you know what? This was for the this was for the first issue of Skatebook because we shot that in and out burger on the board with a strawberry milkshake on that trip. And um, so we're on our way back, oh, and I'm like, I go, dude, we gotta go. We gotta go by Jason. We gotta go find Jason. We gotta go find him. Yeah, dude. We just gotta find it. Solomon's like, oh yeah, let's go. So we do it. So I remember I was starting to get sick as a dog on this trip. So we're like getting there, we're getting really close to his pants, and I'm just like oh, we're getting close to his place, you know, in there and uh and uh, Watsonville or whatever. Yeah, yeah. And I was like, oh, shit, I shit my pants. <laughs> you did? Yeah, I shit my pants. I'm like, not even kidding you. Those two are in the front seat, saw them and they're like, no, you didn't, no, you didn't. I'm like, yeah, dude, I did. So was it because it's something you ate, drank? What was know, it? Just, just, just yeah. shitty food. Yeah, like, like, back then, like taco, whatever, and road, and all that road shit. dog, road dog snacks and like whatever. And you got to Jason's with shit pants? And, and his right. part, he was, he was just right there. It was minutes away. Yeah. And I got there and he was just like, oh, I'm like, did, I'm did like Jason's there and I'm like, Hey Jason, you got you got anything I can wear? Like, shit, my pants on your clothes. Too. What did Jason say? He's like he's like he's all, all quiet, all quiet. He's like, yeah, I got you, I got you. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> he takes me out of this room. He gives me one of his like you know uh, Tijuana blankets. Yeah, yeah. You know, he gives me one of those. He's like, put that on or whatever. Yeah. I'm like, okay, I gotta ditch my I got to ditch my jeans. Yeah. It was bad. It was bad. Yeah. <laughs> I'm feeling pretty bad, you know. Yeah. And we're there, and I I don't even think we even photographed or anything because I was I was really bad. I'm like I gotta get home, guys. This is bad. Yeah, so I, I, just go, I don't shit my, my pants, pants on a regular basis. Yeah. He pulls me over to the side. He's kind of got his arm around me. It's like, oh, Mike, don't feel bad, man. Yeah. Like, what do you mean, don't feel bad? He's like, I gotta tell you this story. This is like pretty funny. Like, Jason's telling me how how he says it. He's like, there's a picture on my grandma's refrigerator, yeah. and um, 
He says, every time I go over there, she's like, oh, Jason, I just love this photo of you. You look like a movie star. Yeah. <laughs> and he said he finally told her after about it being on there for years. He's like, he finally, I don't think he, I don't know if he told me he told her, but he definitely told me that he had just shit his pants when that photo was taken. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and he's yeah. like, don't, don't even sweat it, dude. Don't yeah, I've done, I've done it too. Was he 16? No, this was like 10 years ago. No, when did he shit his pants? Oh, the photo. Uh, I, when I, kid, I, I don't kid. know how old he said he was in the picture, but he was like basically reassuring me that it was going to be okay because there's a photo on his grandmother's refrigerator of him shitting yeah. his pants, and the look on his face from shitting his pants made him look like a movie star. Yeah, dude. <laughs> I shit my pants That's before, dude. I shit my <laughs> pants. When I wrote for Santa Cruz Skateboards, uh, <laughs> Novak owned Harmony Foods. It was like this... Uh, um, health food, like sour, they had like sour balls, like green sour ball things. So we had skate the cannery and they'd have like these uh, bins of like food and uh, they had these green sour balls. So I'd like go in there and fucking eat all these dyed green, bright green fucking sour balls <laughs> and fucking uh, I went down to like, th in Santa, like, like, like 38th Avenue, East Side Santa Cruz and uh, there was a big party on the fucking beach and I was talking to these girls. There was like three girls around me. And I fucking, those, those jelly beans, I ate so many. It was fucking my stomach. And I was like, oh, fuck, I got to fart. So I, I tried to like fart. And as soon as I farted, dude, I just shit my pants, right? I fucking panicked. I fucking freaked out, right? I was like, these two girls are going to smell it. What do I do? And I'm like, I got to go. And I fucking jammed down that alley. And I'm like, oh, dude, I got to get rid of these fucking boxers. And I like took one leg off. And I thought I could, for some reason, get... Uh, off like that. I was like, fuck, I got to like, I completely had to strip down naked. Oh and then God. I went, my friend lived like right around the corner. I went up and I fucking had to, to fucking, I, di I ditched the boxers and I fucking go up there and I look and it's fucking stained green fucking <laughs> shit. Oh, and I tried to rub it like, ah, uh, and it wouldn't come off because it was like dyed, sour, like those sour balls. Green. But they're green, yes. and it was just bright green, and it was just it just stained my fucking whole leg down to my fucking ankle, <laughs> dude. I'm just oh shit, God. fucking. Green, green and you know, you eat like you said, you eat Taco like Bell, or whatever. I was like, yeah, look just like that, <laughs> dude. I was like, fuck, dude. I was just talking to a couple girls, man. I shit now. I gotta go home, and this fucking sucks. But I've done it, dude. I, I, shit I still my got pants. that blanket. I still got. Yeah, it. it's in my beach bag. <laughs> and, then I, and then I have a buddy. I had to wear that all the way home. I didn't have any Where pants. were you living at that time? Uh, Manhattan Beach. Okay. On Manhattan 27. Beach. Uh, yeah. Okay. And, and then, yeah, I don't know if you, uh, Steve Yearsley, I grew up skating with him in Santa Cruz. He wrote for Santa Cruz back in the day. Like, he was one of the a legend in Santa Cruz, right? I think Roscop and Meekster hooked him up with NHS. Yeah. And, uh, Dude, we were like, I was fucking, I think I was like in ninth, we were ninth grade and we hung out at Day's Market. It's like a fucking market where you go on the weekends in high school and you find mm -hmm. out where all the cake parties are. Yeah. So we'd always hang out there and I fucking was listening to Gigi Allen back then, you know, oh, you yeah. couldn't find his shit anywhere. So yeah. you heard it and Bite I was it, like, dude, fucking yeah, <laughs> drink, fight and fuck all this shit. I'm yeah. like, dude, I fucking love this shit, right? He shits in his hand, he throws it at people, he eats it. I'm all, this is the fucking best dude ever, right? So I turned him on to years ago, like, dude, Gigi Allen, dude, yeah. he fucking throws, he shits, he jacks, off, like, does all this weird yeah. shit. And then- No one's safe at a Gigi Allen show. No. No one, not even in the back row, back wall. No, uh, no, no, I've something. seen it. Yeah, dude, in person. <laughs> I've been splattered by it, but- Oh my God. So he's in the part, we're at this parking lot, Days Market, it's right by the new NHS. It's that oh, market right there. Um, so he's got a girlfriend and he's arguing with her, mm -hmm. right? And they're fucking arguing. The girl's with their friend. He's like, fuck you. But they started arguing back for And I'm like, and then all he did was drink uh, what, Meister Brown beer and Taco Meister Bell. Brown. He was just a fucking a gnarly oh, that's drinker. A recipe and, for disaster. Yeah. And he's like, dude, I got shit. I'm like, dude, Steve, shit, shit, shit on him. Shit on him. Like, sh <laughs> put your hand down your pants, shit in your hand, and like, no. cup it, scoop it out and fucking throw it at him. Oh, I'm like, dude, man. you gotta do it, Gigi Allen. He's like, okay. And fucking, he's arguing with these girls and he fucking reaches down and he fucking shits his hand and he's just like, Rah! and just like, <laughs> it just splatters them. And they're like, black hair, black oh leather jackets. God. He puts his hand down again, 
fucking shits his hand and like, like just oh splatters him. And I'm like, yeah, this is the fucking best. And he like, and she's like, what's going? What the fuck? And I'm like, you just got shit on. She's like, what? And they like grabbed her hair and they like smelt it. She's like, bleh, bleh. and then like one girl threw up. We just got shit on. I'm like, yeah, call you shithead. You bitches got shit on. And they fucking freaked out. They grabbed like a bottle in the parking lot and they smashed it. Oh and they fucking God. chased him through the fucking night owl bar. And he ran out. And they're like, we got your surfboard. She lived down the street. Like, we're going to break it. So he fucking <laughs> hauled ass through the bar, went out the exit, ran all the way down the street, you hopped the surfboard? fence, got a surfboard, and yeah. hid in the bushes and came back laughing. Oh, my these God. These girls walk home. I mean, we're in ninth grade, so we're fucking, we're not, you know, like, yeah. these girls are out late. The cops are like, what? the fuck you girls is doing? We just got fucking shit on by Steve Yearsley. And they all knew who Steve would get arrested all the time. He was older than me, so he'd been so around. Cop, cops oh. knew him, too. Oh, Steve Yearsley, all right. So they, he, they fucking laughing. arrest him, dude. Oh, they they fucking, he goes to court for it, dude. My buddy went, and they're like, Steve Yearsley oh, to the podium. Like, what, 16, 15? Yeah, he's a little older than me, so whatever. I don't know how old you are. And I'm in ninth grade, so whatever. Like, I'm six, uh, fuck, 15, yeah, 14. 15. So he was like maybe a couple years older. Oh so God. fucking he they goes to court and, and they're like to, to, whatever it's called the, 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 the what, what's it called when you shit on someone I don't know like the court name of it I never defecation, defecation or something defecation. like defecation, defecation Steve what do you have to say he's like judge defecation assault yeah he's like <laughs> judge if you knew these girls you would have done the same thing and he's like fucking Mr. Years they're, they're just like click, get the case dismissed get the Steve we, we can't yeah. we're done we're over <laughs> like, I, th I thought they you had to be on tours to get that kind of shit yeah, yeah. <laughs> but it was just like Smith. fucking just, yeah but it was it just that, that just reminded me of shit and Oh and so, it, dude, it was fucking the best. Deep in the heart of Santa Cruz. Yeah, right in, in mid Dude, it, it was where Lost Boys was filmed, that market. Oh, with the wow. whale that stuck out oh, of the wall. Wow. It was that market. Yeah. But we'd always cause a ruckus, but I, just the fucking same shit in his hand and this thing. <laughs> and, the and they didn't even know at first. It was just like all over their like, jacket oh, and, and their hair. And they had nice, pretty black hair. Like So it was all in there. And they're it took like, them you got, a second to go. Yeah, and they're like, huh? That's and like, <laughs> but like, oh my god, yeah, you got fucking G -G G -G Steve, G -G you're the Allen, best. A true inspiration. Yeah, I was just like, Steve, oh, you're the best, dude. Yeah. You're my hero, dude. Yeah. Like, I was forever. So, I remember not going to the shows. Them? Like, I remember a couple times where he came through, and we were like, I remember Saba knew all about. Him. Yeah. Saba hipped us, dude. Yeah, yeah, pretty quick. Like, you gotta go. Yeah. I've like, seen, seen him, dude. Shit. One time, and I then after him. that, like, nah, I'm cool, man. Yeah. <laughs> I'm cool. I fucking seen that, man. It was fucking the best show I ever seen. And it stink like shit, dude. I was not leaving. I'm fucking witnessing dude, all would, of like, it. like run out into the, chase you down. Like, dude, dude we place. were throwing bottles at him, fucking hucking them at him. He fucking was like getting hit, throwing, throwing them back at us. We're ducking. We're bar stools. Throwing him at him. He'd get the bottle in San Francisco at the rendezvous. Me, Julian, Joey Trachet went. Jake Phelps was there. I think Bryce lasted for a minute. Danny Sargent lasted for a minute. I think even Jake even left for, uh, after, like, didn't last all thing. But me, Julian, and Joey, Tobin Yellen was there. That's how I got the photo. Tobin took photo. Like, but he, he fucking came out. Like, the whole band was up there. Merle Allen, his brother, they're all up there. Like, where the fuck is Gigi at? And all of a sudden, I get, like, hit. And I'm fucking like, what the fuck? And it's Gigi running through with a hoodie on, little pee-pee like that, and fucking cowboy boots. <laughs> Gets on stage, instantly just shits on stage, fucking grabs oh it, and God. then throws it. And just oh fucking, God. it was the whole, and there was, like, these skinhead dudes that were, like, before the show, like, we're going to fuck Gigi up. We're going to fucking beat the fuck out of him. Fuck Fuck Gigi. Dude, he had to have hepatitis like A through Z. Oh, everything. Like, dude, and as soon as that shit started mean, flying, those skinheads were gone. They were gone. You didn't even know where they, they were fucking say, gone. The they didn't want no part of it. Yeah. It's like someone pulling a gun. Everyone's running. Once that, once you sh once you oh, shit man. on the floor right there. Right dude, Julian was running sorry, around on the, the fucking stage, like jumping up. He oh, fucking man. like slid and fell. And yeah. he had, he, that's when he wrote for SMA. And after the show, we come out. And I was like, your hat. Julian, and he had a little fucking Gigi doo doo on his fucking hat. I wish I would have kept his hat, dude. Yeah. Just like, this is like put 90, it in a bag and kept it. It was probably 90, some stuff it was 90, on eBay, yeah. He died in, I think, 92. So I think it was 90. He, he died June 28th. I think it was 93 or 92. So I see him like a, like 
a year before he died. It was at the rendezvous. Jeff Whitehead, like, because he kept, was supposed to play and he, what, flaking or whatever. And then Whitehead lived in the city and Whitehead's like, dude, he's staying above the, because Whitehead's in the music. Yeah. He's staying with these dudes above where I'm staying at. He's here. He's playing Friday or whatever. Like, wow. it was like on the fourth, I think I remember, but like, I got the flyer somewhere and uh, he's like, dude, come. So I jammed from Santa Cruz. You got a picture with him? I got a couple photos. Tobin shot? Yeah, Tobin yeah, shot. I'm sick, man. We, and then we fucking, we snuck up stage, snuck up stage after he was done, and there was all these people in there, and they're fucking tape recording, remember the little hand recorders? Yeah, yeah. And there was one dude that was like recording them that everyone was like behind, it was the main dude, and it was Jello Biafro was fucking recording them. Wow. Gigi, and he was like the male, Gigi, after Gigi, oh yeah, and then Gigi was on stage, and there's like a girl on stage like, yeah, Gigi, like all excited. And he's like, oh, oh yeah, you fucking love it. She grabbed, he grabbed her head and he fucking shoved it on his wiener and she started sucking on his little peepee. And then he just stepped back and just started socking her. And she was like, ah, freaked out and disappeared oh in the crowd. And I was I just like, video of that. holy shit. Yeah. But then we went up, like, he snuck up stage, me and Julian. And then, dude, he was like the mellowest, nicest fucking human. Like, he was like smart. He was answering questions. Like, he could have could have been a, it's a high school teacher or something like oh smart. God. I was just like he was just fucking kicking it there. Wow. Smell like dude like this fucking. G and then he came down and me and Julian had um, we broke into the storage thing of the bar and we fucking stole a case of beer and hid it underneath the pool, the pool table. And we like you want a beer, GG, the warm. He's like yeah, fucking drink. Yeah. Oh my god. I got to say with the girls were coming up like dude, can I get a photo? Can I make out with you? I'm like yeah. Ugh. He's just fucking just rolling shit and eating it. And, <laughs> Smashing bottles, cutting them. Dude, it yeah. was the best show ever. I was yeah. like, dude, I've seen that shit, dude. I remember Todd Prince and, and some of the Sacto heads that were in San Francisco. I was like, we're going to go see Gigi. And, and I don't know, someone I had known who, you know, was going to, going to those shows. Someone else I knew was just like, you got to go. And I'm like, man, I just getting feces <laughs> flung at me. It's a know, heavy commitment. I don't know if I'm, I just don't know if I'm ready for that. And, you know, now you get older, you're like, I missed out. Yeah. And yet you had to just witness it, though. I did. I did. I fucking. There's, it was one of the craziest shows I've ever seen. There's a lot oh, of yeah. stuff. Like I, I look back and I'm like, <laughs> man, I, I'm so, I'm like, I'm so fortunate and grateful to be alive right now because I start to look at things. I'm talking, you know, like my girlfriend who ended up my wife who was with this guy, and I beat him up, and then I went on tour with Losi. Then I come back and I go to she's at her mom's house, and I go there. And this guy had moved in and he's living there. And I'm like, what? Yeah. You know, I'm like, we're still married, bro. I was just gone for two months. And he's living there and I, you know, hit him in the face. He's like, you broke my nose. And I'm like, no, I didn't. He gets up and I crack him again. He's like, you broke my nose. And he sits on the edge of the bed. I'm like, I can't believe this guy's at my mother-in-law's house. Yeah. And, uh, ah, and then I hit him again. And then we get, you know, he leaves. Yeah, why aren't you in jail? And then he come. That's the thing. <laughs> you saved me from that. That's another story. Huh. So then, oh, well, you were there. You pulled me off of when I, we were skating it by across the street from the fountain in the parking lot. But anyway, he comes back later that night with his dad and his mom and a gun, and he's his dad's trying to beat me up while he's pointing a gun at me, and they're all yelling at me. And you beat up our son, and I'm like, he screwed my wife. And then they just stop. They're like, and he's got the gun on me. He's like. You know, you you stole. I was in the army. I took all his army uniforms and sold them to the surplus store. And he's holding the gun on me, and you know, everyone's screaming. And I'm like, "You screwed my wife!" Like, what do you expect? And the parents just stopped. Everyone stopped. They're like, "You got. You're married. That's your wife." And they looked at them and like, "You're you're sleeping with this guy's wife. This is his wife's mom's house." And they're like, "We gotta go." They're like, "Oh my god! Oh my god!" And that was. Then a little while later, I come back to get all my stuff. It was in storage. I call her up, hey, I just want to say, hey, I'm getting all the stuff and leave in town and I hope you're good. And Jay picks up the phone, this guy, and God bless him. He's like, yeah, I'm not afraid of you. And I'm like, dude, I'm not talking to you. We're, he's like, I've been working out. And blah, blah. <laughs> Wait, Jay, I'm going to fold you in half like a lawn chair. Just shut up. Yeah. You know, let me talk to Melissa. I'm like, she's, I'm like, just drive over me. I just want to say hi. And I don't know if, I didn't even have divorce paperwork ready yet. And they come over and we're skating across the street in a parking garage. It's all these kids. Oh, I remember that garage. And we're skating, and he starts, he gets out, like, he drives her over, and he starts, you know, coming over and talking. I'm like, Jay, just go, we're not doing it. We're I'm just talking. Yeah. Man. She's your lady now. We're just trying to figure out what's happening. With all I don't her. remember this guy. Was he like a skater dude or something? No, he was an army. 
Uh, Weirdo. What are you, our, but, army buddies? Long story short, I'm like, hey, <laughs> did you have, I don't know if you, <laughs> I I go, hey, can I borrow your, can I have your car keys? I'm going to go across the street. I want to just sit in your car and talk to her for a second because he's walking back and forth, drinking a beer, smoking, mad dog, and us, and we're, we're just talking. I'm like, hey, man, can I have your keys? I'm going to go across the street. So we go across the street, and after like five minutes, he pulls up in the car, and he's yelling, get out of the car, bitch. I'm going to kill you. And I'm like, oh. I get out of the car. I walk around to this front, you know, to the, he's sitting in the driver's seat. And I'm like, get out of the car. Yeah. You know, get out of the car. He's like, get in. Yeah, you know, profanities at my sweet bride. Who's, yeah. And I just go off and start wailing on him. And, you know, like, you know, break his jaw, break his nose, bite me. so ear. mean. So. I, I, I was you. upset, but Mike picks me up and, you know, takes me in front of me. He's like, dude, you got to get away or I'm going to start beating on you. You got to leave. Yeah. So they leave. And I remember just after Mike pulled me off and I look at all the skater kids, because I'm older, I'm a little bit older. That's when I'm like 23 years old. And they're like 16, no 17. Older. I'm a lover, not a fighter these yeah, days. So. Yeah, me too. Dude, me too. What? Me. I don't fight anymore. But I'm like, I don't have nothing to do I'm with a that bit chaos. Older, yeah. But those guys are just look. I mean, I I was pretty aggressive and you know did a lot of not you know just was wailing on the dude and bit his face and his finger and broke his. Stuff. I bit. Well, I'm glad before. you didn't I kill the guy because you wouldn't well, be here like on the Rip Ride you, or Die podcast. Yeah, dude. You pulled me <laughs> on, but I, I just remember Tony Asini. I remember I turned around and looked at all the kids and Tony Asini was there, and he was just they were looking at me like they couldn't. They're like, oh my god, like psychopath you know well, of course right. you probably they, almost killed a guy they leave they go down the street and we go back to skating we're skating around the parking garage and all of a sudden this pizza truck shows up and they're like hey is chris here is chris here and all the kids are they didn't know my name was chris and so it was slappy <laughs> yeah and, and they're like you were like hey sloppy and i go over to the truck and my wife's in the front seat bleeding out of her face he had just drove like half a mile away and just started wailing on her fucking post yeah yeah anyway Long story short, we got divorced, and I got lucky that I didn't go into any kind of facilities. Yeah, that's right. We worked out a deal where the charges were dropped, and then uh, I've been... Okay. I've been and now here you yeah. are today, the denim donkey. Super denim donkey. I'm I've been very nice. fortunate in... I feel like now I saved your life. How you did. Thought, how, what are we looking at? You've been going for like an hour and 40 minutes. Okay, like, we're going to have to wrap this up, but... I want to get to this. My, my my dear friend right here, Mark. Sleeper. What's the sleeper story? Well, well, we don't have time for that. Yeah, we'll, we'll, we'll come back. But he he's a um conspiracy. Like, he's in conspiracy. Uh-oh. I know. Last oh, time you were no. on my podcast, Uh-oh. Um, you had mentioned it's that the fucking... Uh, yeah, I just want to... Do, do, do you still... Do you still... And we, we don't have to make this long, but we, I just want to touch base because you brought it up and... <laughs> And it would be a long rad marathon if it was true. Is the fucking uh, do you still believe in the the the, the Earth uh, flat? The flatness. Because just the think earth. if it was flat, like the marathon that you could like that would be a sick like. Uh, Wait, which one of you guys are a flat earther? <laughs> right. I, I sorry, I didn't mean to hey, point. He's he's asking. The, I, all of the things. Do you still believe in it? That's all I'm asking. You know, I mean, I mean, is that about last time? Whether, I'm, whether the Earth is a vast irregular plane or whether it's a spinning oh space ball. Hey, some people believe the spinning space ball is going a thousand miles an hour and it's going around the sun at sixty-six thousand miles an hour, and the entire universe, or at least the galaxy, is flying through space at you know, half a million miles an hour, but we look up and see the exact same stars as, you know. Pay attention, Andy. Pay attention. I, I know I am, because I pay attention. He just, we and him, we're just talking, and I don't know nothing about nothing. I'm like... Here's the thing. But, uh, and, and as far as, you know, go. as far as get, recent okay. news with Kanye, hey, I just want to say organically grown right here, Juice Company. This is my I homie. Love, I love the juice. See, there you I go. I don't care what well, Kanye says. I love the juice. It, it um, is good. And he and fucking fresh. You, the, yeah, whoever this, the, Will. the mystery OG juice. flavor is amazing. Yeah, he hooked it up. He but, hooked it up. But the thing is, you, all of that stuff, like I believe in a lot of things that are not um, popular ideas or not promoted on television and news and, and, the, and the, in the universities and the churches, okay? There's a lot of stuff that I realize. I'm like, we've been lying to about a lot of different things. And yes, I believe in all that stuff. I was thinking earlier. Yeah, I was just curious. Yeah. I was, I was just, just like, because uh, the, the deeper you dig, it's it's like they call it going down the rabbit hole. You go to disprove stuff, and all of a sudden, it's like, hey, I'm going to go to AA and do what you guys say just to prove that you guys are in a cult and it doesn't work. Or I'm going to do the 12 steps just to show you it doesn't work. But if you're really honest and you try to work it, you're going to go, wait, 
my life is changing and I feel good. Yeah. And I do not want to go back to where I was. Right, right. No, that's I true. want to love and forgive my fellow man. And I want him to rise up alongside me. And so the one thing I look at all the conspiracy, all the crazy stuff, and I do believe there's a lot of it. There, almost there, every, there is. I, endless. I just, I just want to see if you're a hey. firm believer still oh, in I'm this the ladder. Yeah. I, I used to say I'm 100%, 100% all in for Jesus, or I'm 100% all in for the globe, or the flat earth, or 9-11, or whatever. Yeah. Now I'm like, you know what? I'm pretty sure my, I believe this is what I believe today, but whatever happens, whatever has happened, if we can't make peace with each other and make peace because we are the slaves. Yeah. Look at your, you got a slave number, your driver's license, all of these things. We don't own any of it. We license and register. It's but we're talking, we're talking about flat earth though. But we got to talk earth, about flat earth. Yeah. Exactly. <laughs> the flat earth is just, <laughs> the, 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 it's all connected. It's all connected. Do you, do you know about this? Uh, um, Mark and I were discussing, I'm not, like I said, I've the juice. made it to like ninth like grade. The juice. And, uh, I, I got a diploma, but it's from a continuation school, so I don't know. I'm not really too. all. I could survive on the too. streets, but I'm not book smart. Hey, so it's just that the same. That but he was too. talking. Do you know anything about um, Antarctica? Antarctica is that what it, Antarctica? The Antarctic Antarctica. Antarctica. Circle. The, an, the, and the but, Arctic. Do, do, what, do you, what do you know about it? Can you? Oh, let, oh there's. It is called the Arctic yeah, Circle. I just found it. It's but, called the Arctic Circle for a reason. To, um, do you, there, do you, there's you know, a treaty there. I don't know if the Nazis have. Treaty. Is that like what you're? So, uh, there's another. Yeah, the Arctic. In like, well, there, here's one thing you. Do, can, do you know any of this shit? Yeah, have you I heard about this shit? About it. You do. One <laughs> thing you got to realize is if you there's, said, there's. That's the most honest thing you said. I don't know. Operation. No, but this is. You know about that? You heard what he's saying? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Really? All of it, all of this stuff. See, I told you you guys would get along good. But okay, they, but start, here's. Get along, even if you didn't believe any of it, I love everything. I don't know any of them, but I still like triple. I like listening. One highly suspicious fact about the Antarctic is that it's completely. You cannot. You can't, I'm not allowed to go there. Yeah. If you get caught yeah. there, you're going to jail, you're going to prison. Yeah. So what if it's, you're a penguin lover? I mean, in an appropriate know, way. In a, in that's a suspicious way. to me. There's there's portions of the of the Grand Canyon that if you're just, if you even go there, you get arrested. So yeah. there's places on earth that you just can't even Just off, to, just off topic right now, can I ask you guys a question? Sure. How do my eyebrows look? Do they look all right? Have you had them plucked? I, I, I shaved them twice when I was a kid. Can I tell you guys a secret? Are they tattooed? I, no, I went and got them threaded. What? What does that mean? <laughs> That's suspect. I did. I just, I, no, my friend went and he's like, dude, I'm going. I'm like, well, I started making fun of him. And I was like, what? So I went with them because we're going to get food them? afterwards. Their eyebrows are great. They, they get like a, they have the thing hanging down and they wrap with something. And they're like, <laughs> and it like fucking hurts. But I shave my eyebrows twice. So they get crazy, right? And I was making fun of them, oh, and then I was what like, "Makes them get nuts." Because when you shave them, they grow out extra, extra thick or something. Yeah, they go crazy. Mine get mad long. Sometimes yeah. mine are like I can pull them way out like this. I mean, that's just part of getting old. So I, I was just them. curious, man, because I was really proud. But I think they're growing back again. But hey, I wouldn't have known. I, it was only ten dollars. It was only ten dollars. And he didn't say them. they wouldn't know. I just want to say one thing, dude. You look better than ever right now. You look Thank great. you. You look yeah. great. You look great. great. You look great. You look so healthy and vibrant, and like you're just. Your soul is just... I swear. Like, dude, I appreciate dude, it, there, man. man. Yeah. Because yeah. yeah. I wasn't doing too good last night like, when I was with Jesse and uh, at the end of the podcast, I was... Yeah, that's uh, cool. Yeah. I was hammering on you to skate. Like, <laughs> Yeah, I, I know. And I wish I would. I just wasn't... Yeah. I wasn't there yet. Yeah, I just totally fucking cool. took me a minute. But yeah, dude, I'm like the happiest and healthiest I've ever great. been. You look, you look phenomenal. Dude, I, when I saw you at SkaterCon, I was like, damn. Like, yeah, so dude. So whoever I was with, I was like, dude, Andy looks... I think I was with Donnie Miller. Yeah, yeah, and yeah. I was Donnie's like, rap. Pulled over Donnie. I was like, Donnie, he looks great. Right, yeah. yeah. He just dude, looks great. Fucking, eyebrows uh, are the cherry on top. Yeah, yeah. Let me, dude. Let I me was, look at these one more yeah, time. Yeah, dude, bro. get a little fucking. <laughs> dude, and I, I was like, whoa. She was like, <laughs> kind of hurt, but I was like, fuck, I look so good. <laughs> yeah. I don't know anything about eyebrow threading, but if. if <laughs> let me see. Maybe you can use it too. So yeah. Hey, if they ever make a. I got. I'm good right now. Look at this. But guy. if they. What? <laughs> I need to shave again. I might get a haircut. I don't know which one. But. Uh, yeah. Um, yeah. You know what? I work in a, in a raw zone and I just want to look like a hobo and I got no There ain't nothing wrong with nothing. that. I'm like, please. Yeah. Hey, you know. But, um. 
if they ever do a movie and they want to have like Robert Duvall as like a gangster, yeah, and an ex-con, no, you you could be like a young Robert Duvall. Oh, I'd, I'd do that one. Robert Duvall was yeah. sick. He's in one of my favorite movies. Um, and then the first time I saw it, I didn't like it because it portrays Christians in a bad light. Or this Robert Duvall plays a character who's a Christian, but he's also a, a maniac. And the movie is called The Apostle. And in that movie, I'm like, man, he, he does all this bad stuff. And mm -hmm. But in the, I'm like, you know what? Actually, that's real because whether you're in a program, a 12-step program, or you're just yeah. whatever you are, humans are so messed up. And humans are spirits. If you don't have your spirit in an uplift, positive, focused way, right, right. it's very easy to, to go to the left or the right and, and get off track. And the 12 steps, like the only reason I got sober, really got serious is I started to read the literature. I'm like, like, wait a second, this program is is like another level divinely inspired because if it can save you and me, anyone from addiction, obsession, whatever it is we get caught up in, because yeah. 12 steps apply to everything. I am powerless over motorcycles. I am right. powerless over machine guns. I love machine guns. I love, I love that stuff. But I don't want to go to prison. I don't want to do things that separate me from my wife or my family or my friends. And I find that... You know, the conspiracy stuff, I've gone off the deep end and all that stuff. I'm like, man, if I'm not focused on one day at a time living right and doing the right thing and making peace, making amends and just keeping that going, it doesn't matter if you have a year, 10 years, 15, 20 years. It doesn't matter. We are one thought away from just complete chaos. We are, dude. Absolutely. You know? And I We're falling over the side of the flat earth. Like falling right. It's not like that. It's not like that. But the thing with that, I started to look at the origins of the 12-step program, and it all came from the Bible. The Oxford group and 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 you know, Dr. Bob and Bill, like they just took like parts of the New Testament yeah. of the Bible and they created the 12 steps. It was six steps, it became 12 steps. Right, and right. I look at this and I'm like, there's a verse in the Bible that says God uses the base things, the base things of the earth to confound the mighty, meaning he takes people that are broken, and I don't want to call us retards, but, but you know, people that are like, obviously got issues and stuff, and then builds them up and saves them. That way people are like, this is a miracle. When you see someone who comes back from beyond, and you're like, this is a miracle. And God's like, that's how he laughs at doctors and scientists, because they, they can't give you a pill to fix you. They can't do a surgery no. to fix you. And, and addicts and alcoholics working amongst each other and laughing at the dumb stuff and laughing at the things that happen and saying, this is what I'm doing today. This is how I'm moving forward. And we, we hold together and do that. And then whatever you had three years ago, you were going good. Then you had some little sides, you know, missions. Yeah, yeah. You did a little research, as they say. Yep. And you do that and, and you want to kill yourself and you feel horrible. And when you come back into the rooms and people are like, hey, we love you, brother. Stay here. Yeah. That's the... That's that's the best thing ever. To be yeah. forgiven and loved is the best thing ever. And, and my per personal belief is that, okay, if there is God, then the, I, the love I felt in the room, the love I felt from different people in my life that have loved me and forgiven me and said, hey, my dad would come to pick me up, go into the judge's quarters, talk to them, whatever they worked a deal out, and then I'd walk, and I'm like, I'm free? You're not, I'm not getting a beating? I'm not... Yeah. That's... That makes you motivated to do all the right things or try to do the right things. And so the flat, all the, I believe in all the conspiracy stuff. I do. It's interesting. It is. It is. It's it's it definitely is. It, it definitely is. is. And, and when you look at it all, it kind of makes you realize, wow, these people are running everything and they're insane. We do not have to be insane. We do not have to lie, Rob Steeton, you know, mm. cheat each other to survive because someone, a power greater than ourselves, has restored us to sanity. And so we can just have a simple trust and keep doing what we know is right. Mm -hmm. And and man, you 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 know, it's a program of attraction rather than promotion. Yeah. So so we do these things, and I just feel every day, man, I feel so blessed. And and you can look back at times, crazy times, and all the things, and like, man, to be here decades later and laughing about some of that. Yeah, stuff, it's fucking great. And I kind of wish that I saw. Yeah, it's in sketchy yeah. situations open doors. It does, dude. It absolutely you gotta, does. You gotta step forward. You gotta it move does. out and keep it moving, you know? Keep it fucking moving. You gotta moving. try again. Yeah, you gotta, yeah. Like, one of the best analogies of this stuff that I ever heard was, like, in business was from Solomon, where he was like, 
Everything is just like skateboarding. You're gonna, you're not gonna make it until you like hit your shins a bunch of times, yeah, break your wrists, like fall, eat shit, yeah, and then you're gonna start landing stuff, yeah, and then you'll continually land stuff, yeah, it's whichever lane you're going, going in. Oh yeah, they're they are. They're nice. Man. All right. <laughs> hey, so dude, we gotta get, we gotta wrap this up. But yeah, what we, we got? You know what? You've got great teeth, bro. I fucking do. <laughs> I'm fucking lucky to have these. I can eat whatever I want now. I couldn't do that before. Oh, man, to have to go through the dental stuff like that. Yeah. It's fucking brutal. Yeah, we got to go. roll. All right, dude. Uh, Slappy, Mike, dude. Thank you, guys. Dude, hey. s- decades of friendship, dude. I'm glad we got to fucking do this. Yeah. I appreciate I love you guys, dude. Love and, you. like, memories are forever. Like, yeah. all the, from Absolutely. first meeting you guys. So like, you look amazing, too, man. You, you, you look, look great, Mike, man. I'm, I'm going, yeah. <laughs> hey, you're being sorry. This is sarcasm. No, yeah. it's not. Yeah. yeah. No, so, all right, not. motherfuckers. Slappy, Mike, right here. Rip, right, or die, motherfuckers. Remember that. Don't ever fucking forget that. Thank you, guys. Fuck yes. We Woo-hoo. are out. See ya. Yeah. Rip Ride or Die podcast brought to you by New Origins Treatment Center. Anyone struggling with addiction or mental health, this is the treatment center that helped me get get me back on my feet, that helped me out, changed my life. So anyone struggling out there, you can personally give me a call at 909-800-0442. I'm telling you, so much love at this treatment center. Uh, So if anyone out there is struggling with mental health or addiction, please give me a call. A-Tech Recovery Massage Guns. These guns are amazing. If you're like me, that like to ride fast, eat shit. I don't care if you're on a motorcycle, a skateboard, if you're getting into fights, bar fights, whatever it is, and you wake up with your body beat up, these are the massage guns you want. A-TechRecovery.com. Go check them out. The massage guns work great. They work wonders.